604. Um, normally, at the beginning of each of each reorganization for a board, uh, we do a um, we do an election for a board chair. But I thought tonight that we could start out by introductions. This is the first time we've gathered as this group, and that we could extend that out to the audience. So maybe um, George, you can start, and we'll work our way around and introduce ourselves, and then we'll go on to other works. Sure. I'm George Gross. Um, I represent uh, Berlin. Um, I've also been U32 uh, representative for Berlin for a couple of years. I'm Mary Lynn Stratton. I um, represent Middlesex. I have just been on the um, running board since lunch. And I'm Chris McBay, I represent uh, Middlesex, and I've been on the running board for a um, little bit of time. And pleased to be here. I'm Lindy Johnson, I represent East Montpelier, and I've been on the East Montpelier board since 2016. I'm Bill Kimball, I'm the superintendent of schools for Washington Central. I'm Flora Diaz Smith, I live in East Montpelier, and I've been in, uh, in the East Montpelier board for nine years. And I have two kids, one at U32, both at U32 now, my middle school, my middle school and my high school. Scott Thompson from Callis. I'm on the U32 board, and I have one child out of three left at U32. Dorothy Naylor from Callis. I've been on the Callis board for since 2017, but I think I'm supposed to be representing all the pigs in the new district. I'm Jonas Eno Van Fleet. I'm representing Worcester. Um, I have two sons, the eight-year-old is at Doty, and the two-year-old will be someday. <laughs> I'm Jael Polskamp. I'm representing Worcester, Doty, and I have one daughter at Doty and one here at E32. And I thought maybe we could do introductions out in the audience. I'm Matthew DeGroote. I'm from Worcester. Kyle Lenz from Middle Sex. I have three kids at Romney. Uh, Rick Keane, I'm on the Callis School Board from Callis. I've outhounded by the last of four coming through U32 now. Mm -hmm. I'm Aaron Boyden, Berlin Elementary Principal. Corey Bebo, the Business Administrator, Washington Central. I'm short, so I'll stand up. Jody Emerson, Associate Principal at U32. I'm Stephen Dellinger Pate, I'm the Principal here at U32. Matt Young, Doty Principal. I'm Jen miller Sano. I'm the curriculum director. I'm also a Middlesex resident and the parent of two year 32 kids. Bill? You should have Jerome put himself in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome Finn, <laughs> probably. I am Jerome uh, from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Lisa? Yes. Oh, I'm, my name is Lisa Stell. I'm actually a Yeah, and David, do you want to introduce yourself? And, and we have to thank Krista and Carla for, and Mary for coming to make sure we're getting everything correct for the start of this meeting. They've done a lot of organizing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They do, they do the major part of that. Um, before we get going into a election of a chair, and if it will, I beg the forgiveness of all in attendance, but I wanted to take a minute and just say something. Um, I thought at least it was, at very least, a superintendent prerogative. That I think I'll just call it that. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for coming to the first meeting of the Washington Central Unified Union School District Board. I, I do understand and fully um, um, recognize the apprehension we have in this meeting that's in here. So I wanted to put that on the table right away, that many of us in this room did not want to have this force merger happen. But the case being that that, may, that that we are at the point we are right now, I know that everyone that's in this room is here for kids. We may express it differently, we may look at it differently, but there isn't an individual in this room that doesn't have kids first. And that's, if we can keep that in our hearts and that in our thoughts, and when things get tough, remember that we always go back to the kids. Um, that's what helps me when I have to do the hard work. Um, so I think that I have the utmost faith that this group will do that. 
that will keep all the kids. I thank Dorothy for saying that. We're here to represent all the kids, and that's why we're all here. Um, and so I believe that in doing that, we can find, we'll find new ways of working together. We've done, had some tremendous history in Washington Central of working together, and I know that can continue. So I'm very optimistic about that for this group. And I know that you'll do that. And I know that, um, that as you do that, all the educators in Washington Central do that, and that most of you that were on prior boards know that all of us will find a way to nurture and inspire in all students the passion, creativity, and power to contribute to their local and global communities. While the educators are on the front lines for that, this board has a part in that as well. So I thank you for that work and that effort that you'll continue to do for on behalf of the students of Washington Central and so forth. So with that, um, I'd like to, if people wouldn't mind, I'd like to pause the agenda and move, as I do with any organization, meeting to 2.1 and elect a chair. And I would accept nominations for the position of chair of the Washington Central Unified Union School District Board. I nominate Scott Thompson. I'll second. second. Scott, are you willing to accept that? Yes. Um, I was actually going to nominate somebody new if they would be willing. Jonas, I liked what you had to say about your first, what you're, why you're on the board, and I just look at us moving forward and thought it'd be nice to nominate somebody who is new to the whole board kind of thing. So, if you're willing. I'm not certain what that role entails. <laughs> <laughs> you're perfect for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a facilitator of the meeting. It's in making sure the meeting stays on track. Uh, the chair uh, guides and helps create agendas with the superintendent. It's a partnership, that, at least it has been a partnership. Uh, the previous policies in the previous district, we have to talk about policies later on, uh, help put together the agenda and then make sure that the meeting happens and we stay on task. We usually, uh, the district organizational meeting, Robert's Rules has been for the district uh, we haven't even talked about what we'll, what this board will gather for rules by Vermont statute. They assume that Vermont, you have Robert's rules, but I think you can go to others if you so choose. Most run in Robert's rules. But I, I'd have to look that up to be certain that you can go to a different set of rules of parliamentary <coughs> procedure. So are you interested in that or? Um, uh, if, if elected, I would serve. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm here to provide a new perspective. Um, I also respect the experience of the people who have been doing this for a long time, which I have not. Uh, so if there is a second and you want to vote for me, I, I will serve, but yeah. be, be, be aware of what you're buying. <laughs> there, were, there were no background discussions. It was a total surprise for him. <laughs> is there a second for that nomination? I'll second. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah. I okay. yeah. Yeah. Are there other nominations? Can I volunteer myself? Hmm. I would nominate Floor. Yeah. Is there a second for that nomination? Oh, I'd second. I guess I'm allowed to second if I nominate somebody else. Uh, yeah. You can second as many oh, motions as <laughs> whatever it is you like. Yeah. Okay, so we have three. Are there any more candidates or nominations? So we have three uh, folks. Would you like to hear something from all of them, or would you like to go to vote? And Jonas already said a little bit about himself. Um, I, 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 give each an opportunity if they want to make a statement, uh, certainly, uh, and maybe even answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Chris. It's a new board. <laughs> it's a new board. It's, it's a whole new board. It's a new <laughs> ball game. Yeah. yeah that's true. Scott, would you like to start? Sure. <clears throat> um, I can tell you that if you elect me chair, I will need a lot of help from all of you. Um, from my perspective, we're in this 
entirely as equal partners, um, no matter how much experience we have or how little, um, no matter whether we come from big towns or small towns, whether we think you know, merger solves problems or compounds them, um, you know, farmers or cowboys, um, whatever, whatever factions may be, we may be inclined to, to find ourselves in. Um, every, everyone's views count and everyone's views need to be incorporated in order to have a greater mind out of the ten of us. So that's what I would try to do. So the question, and it would be for each of the candidates, is um, I think this, if there can be a tendency based on convenience and efficiency uh, that um, when there's communication between the administration and the chair, it kind of stops with mm -hmm. the chair until um, uh, until later. Um, and I would look forward to um, a chair who has an open line of communication. So what comes to the administration to the chair goes out to the board members. So we're not um, understanding it or learning it well after the fact. Um, and so I just I would encourage a free flow of information um, because the chair is the primary can do it between the board and the administration most times. So uh, that is what I'd be looking for uh, from anyone who's been serving that position as the chair. Yeah. Um, and, and I should put a question mark at the end of that for um, whether I would actually do that. Is there a question mark? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm um, saying that, that would be an expectation on my part. That's your that, that would yeah. be. And that's a completely fair expectation. I think from my perspective, what I would love to see having, um, you know, I think it's a common problem with boards that they can kind of stagnate or petrify in place. Um, they're like in an aquarium. It helps to have a, a constant flow of water, um, of information, and even a recycling of uh, people in different positions, such as rotation of chairmanships, um, a variety of, of committees and committee chairs with uh, significant responsibilities that are constantly regenerating the, um, you know, this, this greater mind that we're trying to achieve here together, not just among ourselves, but with our, um, the people we work with in the administration and in the schools. So, yeah, um, I think the circulation of information is, is key to that. Thank you. Go but my interest, and I'm sorry to volunteer myself, is that I've been kind of dreaming about this in some crazy way, too, just because, it, you know, we've worked so hard, and, and I personally feel like I'm a good listener and communicator, and, you know, I try to balance that middle ground in order to create some, some consensus, but I, I totally agree with what, and, and I don't want to, we, we have this one year of an interim superintendent where I want to make you know, I want to make sure that we become a learning, I've been talking about this in some of the meetings, we become kind of a learning community just like our administrators and leadership team are, so we can, as a board, we can do a more informed oversight, which is what we always wanted to do, so be able to monitor better and, and really understand what our roles and responsibilities is that and how each, I see each of us contributing to that, to create that, ground or that climate so that we can, I don't know, I, I feel like no organization can outperform their government, you know, their board, so if we're not functioning at a, at a high level, it would be hard to keep always the good work that is going on. Like, uh, there's so many good things happening uh, right now that I know we all want to wanna support and how we come to that, so I have, you know, some ideas that, you know, maybe I would think that we would, could create like a retreat where we all decide how we want to govern and create like a little governing team. So the so the chair shares that responsibility because there's different communities. I have some paperwork to show <laughs> too, but I, I've just been brainstorming a lot about 
you know, where we are and how we how we came mm -hmm. here. But I, I agree, like a collaborative leadership and a collaborative relationship with our superintendent and the the staff and administrators, so that we are all working collaborative towards the goals that we have set and like a reaffirmation of our vision and mission. At the same time that we engage our communities so that they can support, you know, continue to support and create, you know, engagement in our community is going to be really important as we move on as a, right? and so those are sort of my, that's my vision. It's hard, hard to follow that floor. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, you know, let me start by talking about Floor, um, who I don't know. I don't think we've ever exchanged any words, but at the meetings that I've attended, uh, I've been extremely impressed by your preparation uh, and ability to answer the questions about Arcana uh, that come from the floor of, of a meeting. Um, so I, I found that very impressive. Um, I have planned, I, you know, I was, I, I did not plan to join this board, um, but the town of Worcester needed people to represent it, and Doty needed people to represent it. Um, when Scott talks about factionalism, I'm utterly uninterested in that. Um, um, so I, I think that's very well taken, very well taken. Um, you know, I, I will say that if you know if you are interested in having a chair that um, that is a blank slate, I am that blank slate. Um, um, I much of much of what I do all day every day is to communicate constantly with many different people in many different parts of the world. Um, however. Um, it may be at, at, at this point in time that experience is what is needed to guide this board during this first year. So if you want to vote for me as a blank slate, feel free to do so. I may not vote for myself. <laughs> that is very fair-minded. <laughs> so can I propose uh, just a process question? Uh, since we have three candidates, uh, it, there's at least an op a chance of tie. Yes, there is. Um, and <laughs> so I would suggest that we uh, run by the a system of um, if two folks are tied, top tied, and there's a lesser, the lesser falls out, we vote. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would agree with that. No, it's not the norm, but I think it's. Well, actually, this week. actually, it's old town meeting method. Okay. And, and usually the lower persons voluntarily. Um, excluded themselves. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Just so whatever. But sometimes you didn't. It went on and on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Should voice call. Everyone's fine with a voice vote. I hope. Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I will start uh, and work from left to left to my right. All those in favor of Jonas, please signify by saying aye. Say aye. So say no. One, I believe. Sorry, I'm behind you. No, that's okay. I'm behind you. So I have two. All those in favor of Scott Thompson, please signify by saying aye. 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 I just see a hand, just so I got because it was hard with the unison, just to make sure. Okay, that's five. And all those in favor of Floor Thompson as chair. Floor. Floor Diaz. Yes, <laughs> thanks, <Sarah. laughs> I was looking at Scott and said that. <laughs> so, yeah. The name tag. Yeah. Signify by saying aye. Uh, Hi. That's two. Scott, it appears that you are the chair for the Washington Central Unified School District. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bill. And um, thank you for and Jonas um, for making good use of your talents <laughs> and the talents of everyone here as we move forward. Um, I guess uh, thank you, Chris, for making that opportunity for us to kind of say something. Um, it now, I hope, absolves me of the obligation to say anything further um, with respect to what I plan to do or don't plan to do um, as plan to improvise, um, as the case may be. But so far, um, Bill, we're at 
reception of guests, we've done that, yeah? Uh, we really haven't. We did a, a welcome for people to introduce themselves. I, I did the welcome. It's really up to you, Scott. Um, if you'd like to go right to one, two, you can. Um, I think uh, I just am curious if anybody among our guests has anything of, um, of interest or note or, um, to say or whether there's anything you'd like to say. We do we have the ability to speak up through the meeting, or is this is our communication blocked? No, I, from this I would point like, forward, I would like as much as possible to have that opportunity. Well, um, you know, I have to give priority to board members, but then uh, when members of the public have something that they want to uh, interject, yeah. I think it's it's so much better when it can come in at a in context and at the opportune time. Um, Matthew, uh, I just came to give an update on the superintendent search process. If this board oh, wants, if this board wants one. I think yeah. Chris and Floor are as informed as I am, but for one thing, um, so they too could probably do that update, but. That's one uh, reason I can. Does anybody have any objection? Nope, that's a good thing. I don't need to do it now. I mean, I can. But uh, let's do it. Okay. Um, so eight of the ten members of this board, I think, are currently serving on uh, district boards uh, in, the, in Washington Central. Um, so you'll be aware that at the um, Washington Central SU board meeting in uh, April, we took a decision to pursue uh, an interim superintendent for a period of, of one year, for the next school year, essentially. Um, and that the board delegated to the executive committee the task of conducting that search. Uh, so the executive committee uh, hired a consultant, Mark Andrews, uh, put out an advertisement for the position. Uh, we got a dozen um, applications. The, Mark felt comfortable bringing forward three of his <coughs> candidates to interview. Uh, there was a committee made up of uh, board members, uh, Floor, Chris, and myself, um, teachers, leadership team representatives, central office staff, and a U32 student who interviewed the three candidates last week. And based on that, we now have two finalists uh, that the executive committee will interview tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, recommend one of them to bring forward to the SU board, which will meet um, next Wednesday. Um, so it seems to be proceeding methodically and deliber deliberately toward having a candidate that we can recommend and hopefully hire uh, on the 29th. Um, the, the only sort of new bit of news, which is just from this afternoon, is that um, the Secretary of Education has essentially signed off on our two finalists, so has no reservations or objections and, you know, supports both of them. Uh, so from that standpoint, we're, we're sort of ready and free to move ahead. Um, so I guess I would also like to, for the two members of this board that are not members of the SU board, just to invite you to uh, join us at the WCSU board meeting, which will happen next Wednesday, the 29th, um, probably here in this room. Okay. Okay. Very I'm good. assuming you're going to have an executive session. We are going to have an executive you session. We want to be able to use what this room can do with the cafeteria. Cannot. So we'll be in this room. Um, but we'll invite you to, to join us. So. Thank you, Matthew. So the piece of information that Chris and Dorothy might not have had was about the Secretary of Education. We got an email maybe like 4 o'clock before it is, and I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. so. Thanks very much. And um, I might also just say thank you to um, Matthew as chair of the transition board, which I gather is one mantle that you happily <laughs> shed now, um, even though you still bear the, um, the one of, of being chair of the supervisory union board. So thanks. Um, any, anyone else amongst the public? Okay. Um, agenda revisions and board comments. Does anyone have anything? I have a comment. Yes. 
from uh, we met at the East Montpelier uh, board uh, just on Monday, and uh, we had a, like a little message for the new board, and it was just thank you for your willingness to serve in the new Washington Central Unified School District on behalf of the East Montpelier Elementary School Board. Well, that's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, just to uh, just to give a heads up, we can um, get into greater detail on this when we get down into the discussion agenda. But um, I will suggest deferring the action agenda. Um, in other words, not acting, not taking action on the action agenda today. Uh, and we can explain that. We can talk about that later. And I'm not, I'm not laying that down. I'm just setting it as, as, out as a suggestion. Um, all right. So, uh, public comments and correspondence. Um, everybody seems to have had a chance at that. Thanks. Board organization, we've done 2.1 through 2.3. So now, establishing the time and day of regular... Oh, vice chair. Oh, my goodness. That's what I told you. <laughs> I appreciate it, and and I am that you did exactly right. You know, everything that we do in this new board matters. The um, if I may just sort of make a parenthetical comment, um, as someone said, it's a whole new ballgame, and we are actually defining the ballgame as we work. So how we do our work is, I think, in many respects, every bit as important as what we do at this stage. So um, I like it that you feel completely free to call me on any mistakes or any oversights that I make. And I will encourage you to keep doing it, please. So vice chair, yes. Thanks. Um, do I have nominations? I'll nominate Laura. I'll if second. willing to serve. Yeah, I'll second that. Any other nominations? Okay, one nomination for Floyd D. S. Smith. I um, think we'll that we cast one ballot for Floyd D. S. Smith. Okay. As opposed to the land side? Try to draw a little bit. She's going to she's <laughs> joining town meeting procedures, which is <laughs> different oh, than Robert's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Withdrawn. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of Fleur Dia Smith as vice chair, please say aye. 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 I don't think anyone would have been opposed. So, um, but any opposed, just for the record? No. Good. 2.3, electing a clerk. Do we have nominations for a clerk? I have nominations. Gentlemen. Yes. Please vote to serve and has good penmanship. Oh, I Right. Yeah. 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 And, and there's some, sure. probably some documents you need to sign. There's documents where he's signed. Yes. And did I hear you second, Dorothy? I second. Oh, Laura second. Okay. Let's fight over it. We have a um, nice number of seconds. Okay. Um, any other nominations for clerk? No other nominations? Okay then. All in favor of Jonas? Um, you know that fleet, yes, did I yes. say it correctly? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, please say aye. 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 All opposed? None. Very good. So, congratulations, Mr. Clark. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the time and day of regular monthly meetings. Scott may talk to these in the next one. I can do the next two pieces. And the newspaper record yeah. location? Absolutely. So for operations, it works for the, and for talking with the leadership team, it works for us to be on the first and third week of the month because they're the least amount of disruptions when you think about vacations and other pieces. We would prefer a Wednesday, but it doesn't have to be a Wednesday. I would suggest that you stay away from Mondays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So because Mondays tend to be, we we'll lose some days because of, of way vacations go. So um, our recommendation is a Wednesday, first and third Wednesday, but the day, I mean, a Tuesday or Thursday probably could be looked at as well. Mm -hmm. But those, I think you'll need it once the board gets going twice a month. Um, I have some other pieces under the governance and meet, under the meeting protocols I want to ask the board, so I didn't make other pieces on here for decisions, which could be done tonight or done later as well. Okay. okay. That's right. meetings. Great. So um, do you envision then two meetings per month? Two meetings per month. First week, third week. week. And you're suggesting say first Wednesday. <coughs> third Wednesday. Third Wednesday. Or first Tuesday. Or, you know, first Tuesday, third Tuesday mm -hmm. type of thing. You know, so there's a week in between. And that, um, and that you'll have that will have the least disruptions. I think of any of you that have had, I think a run meet with the first Monday. That's always gets difficult. Uh, some things operationally and for vacations and callous. If you remember back, we were on a fourth week, and that always got yeah. an issue. So we've been looking at the calendar of the school and everything that happens for operations. We're suggesting the first week. And okay. I think both East Montpelier and Callis have their town their select board meetings on Mondays. So people can't participate yeah, right. in both meetings if they want to. Yeah, so I like Wednesdays myself. Does somebody want to move it? Do you have to move it? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Can we have just a general discussion yeah. on what is a Wednesday bed for anyone? In terms sure. Of, just in terms of attendance. I was thinking of just having a, or, or would you like to do that before a motion? I think before we actually pick a day, yeah. because okay. I think whatever day it is, it would be the first week and third week. Yeah. Um, but it, are Wednesdays difficult for I work in Burlington on Wednesdays, so I usually don't leave until 5, <coughs> a little after 5, mm -hmm. depending on traffic. It's, you know, hard to get here by 6. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing. If we could start a little later on Wednesdays, that would be fine. Later is always better for me because I come from Dartmouth every day. So mm -hmm. I will always be late at 6. I can be here at 6.15. 6.15 start time. Start time. If we compromise. If we're meeting oh, twice a week, six months, we should say it over. Or is it some what your planning commission? So I'm here on Wednesday, 6 15. I mean, it's like first and third week. Oh, okay. Uh, Depending on traffic. Or yeah. 6 30. Is 6 30? Yeah, I'd love to do 6 30 then. I can That's take, take my kid up and bring him home. And yeah, I think, I think the, the Yeah, I think I compromise. Can we get input from the administrators? <laughs> no, well, it's just getting everybody home. Yeah. Yeah. The administrators yeah. have been here all day, so like, like a compromise, but I don't know. That I mean, that, yeah, that, that's, always, that's always the issue for administrators. Yeah. 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 So like a middle ground. Maybe they could take turns on first and third. <laughs> well, I want to talk, when we talk yeah. about who meeting process and all that, we're going to talk a lot about who needs to be here, location, mm -hmm. how we how the, how the we want to run the meeting. I mean, I want to talk about structure meetings. I want to get into a bunch of, I don't need to say solve it tonight, but I want to start, I mean, I've got a list of potential topics but, yeah, for helping yeah. make the meetings be really effective. Okay. Okay. That's, that's excellent. Good. So would someone like to make a motion? So I would move that we uh, have our meetings on first um, and third Wednesday. First and th Wednesday, the first and third week, starting at six thirty, um, as a start. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay. Then all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. None opposed. So that's what we've got. First Monday, uh, rather first Wednesday, third Wednesday, 6.30, both times. Good. Um, so for the newspaper, we use the Times Argus, mm -hmm. uh, which I would ask, humbly ask that you stay with that. Having a, as close to a daily paper, they're five days a week, is very helpful, especially when warnings have to be posted in newspapers as required by law at times. Yes. So, um, and we, they are very good about giving us a 2 p.m. deadline for the next day. Yeah. I, um, and the official postings would be this, you need two by law, um, but I would tell you that um, you should name two, and then we should have a talk about other places for postings. Mm -hmm. My other places would be all schools and all town offices. Yeah. Okay, but if you want to pick two, Mm -hmm. Because I would say the best way to ensure things happen accordingly is that you only say two on the motion. Mm -hmm. 
meetings, not town offices, but specific places, right. and then we can go from there. Okay, very good. Um, cleared everybody? Mm -hmm. Does somebody want to move it? I'll make a motion so we do our postings in the time service. Mm -hmm. and, uh, should we label each town? No, just okay. name name two places within the five towns, and then we can talk about the other places as we go. Besides school, after school the, the motion. motion. So, for example, you could say U32 mm -hmm. and the central office as your official postings, oh. mm -hmm. and then we can talk about all the other places where we want them. I'm just giving you an example. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So, so those, those are neutral as far as town to town. Yeah. yeah. U32 and yeah. U yeah. and the central um, office. Make it complicated. Well, we'll, we'll add. We'll, it. I would, we're going to do it anyway. So. Yeah, we're right. going to yeah, add Mark. That's yeah. right. Okay. Did you get that, Lisa? Yes. Okay. Oh, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mindy. Um, further discussion. Yeah. Yes, my think. discussion would be that we also include every school and town office that feeds mm -hmm. into U32. Yes. Right. And the website. And the website. Yeah. Websites, so the <laughs> school, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. yeah, very good. All right, then, um, ready for a vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor of uh, Times Argus, Central Office, and U32 as um, <coughs> newspaper of record and locations for official posting, please say aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Not opposed. Good. That's great. Okay, so now three point. Is, um, are we done with location? Or is that? Yeah. I'm going to talk about that in right three, three. Okay. And meeting, meeting protocols. Uh -huh. Yep. And pro I have okay. a. That's where I have a list of pieces. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Great. So three point one, the Washington Central Union. Unified Union School District budget. Um, there are four subheadings to this the overall budget, the capital fund, the warning, and the communication plan and annual report. Now, I mentioned earlier my suggestion that we consider deferring the action agenda. And I just wanted to explain why and allow everybody to, um, to talk about it and um, you know, deliberate over it since we're a deliberative body. And, and then we can um, just see how it goes. So we have a budget here. Um, first of all, this is uh, a brand new board. Day one of a completely new dispensation. As, again, to repeat, it's, uh, it's a brand new ballgame. We have a budget that is um, 30 plus million dollars. It just seems inconceivable to me that a serious board would, in its first day of operation, would uh, essentially rubber stamp a, a budget of that, well, really, any decision um, of import, let alone one of this magnitude. Even though I've been part of making this budget, both um, uh, in my capacity on the U32 board and on the transition board, this is not a continuation of that. This is something completely different, completely new. This is a budget that we all have to own. And we need to, we need to know it thoroughly. I, I, I mentioned before that I consider us all to be equal partners. It seems to me unfair, at a minimum, to our brand new members to, um, to kind of suck them into a decision that they have not 
been able to really to, to prepare for. Um, have you seen this budget? Yeah. But did you vote for Worcester's budget? Yes. Because this is a compilation yes. of budgets that were voted on by five towns. Yes. It's yes. not brand new. It's, it's a compilation, this is true. But then you've never seen any of the other elements growing in this budget. So there are other aspects to this that um, that are, I think, worth considering, but perhaps they'll come up in discussion, which I shall let floor. Well, I have a couple questions, and I'm just surprised by not you know, wanting to support, since we've been talking about, we had made all this preparation, we had created as the transition board a, um, a line of credit for the 20, 30 days after June 25th. We, we have done a lot of, of work mm -hmm. together to move forward, and this is, Every, every board uh, supported this budget with input from their, their principals, and every budget supports student needs. Like we have, we have set this like goal of, you know, of using most of the money for that instruction part. As in, in all, I, I don't know one principal that that's not their first. The, so, so I feel it is, 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 is up to us as board members to, to study this, and, and later on, when we are, you know, working together and we have the culture of budgeting together, this conversation will be different, and we'll have more time to give input right now. But right now, it's our, I think, in my view, our responsibility to catch up with them and support our our students because this this budget supports our administrators, our teachers, our, and our students, and most important, the student needs to me. You know, because that's what I'm here for, right? The student, not just the outcomes, but the experience in the school. So I, I can, it would be like saying to, you know, oh, middle six, you maybe you spent too much money, it's not better you spent too much money. You didn't really think about your budget. That, that's, to me, I'm being, I'm being extreme. But, you know, I, as, as a group that is just coming together right now, our responsibility is to, 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 to support this especially in the timeline that that we that we are. Mm -hmm. That's just my very strong opinion. Yeah. Yeah. What would the consequences be if we did not approve the budget today? You have until so there's been set a target to try to have an election on June twenty fifth. The warning must be posted by Sunday. The town the clerk, uh, Mary Armsby does that posting and we have assistance from the town clerks, and they don't, many of them don't work on Friday, although I'm sure we could twist some arms to get it posted. Um, and what does that mean? It's up in a public place. Um, so if it weren't done by Monday, we would then be, you know, we have to have 30 to 40 days for a posted warning. So if we did not have a budget and we were not able to post a warning in time, how would the district be funded? It, Currently, there is not a method unless the legislature acts in this current legislative session. Do you think that the legislature will act in this current session? I have no idea right now where the legislature is because they have been all over the map and they've gotten really quiet in the past two weeks. So, Scott, if you if you would recommend deferring action on the budget, how would we handle those consequences? Um, the. The statute that we've looked at before um, in Title 16, 711A. Um, do, you, um, do you have that statute? Yeah, I have the language here. If a budget has not been approved on or before June 30th of any year, the school board may borrow funds pursuant to the authority granted under Section 566 of this title. And um, Section 566 includes a provision for borrowing not to exceed 87% of the previous year's budget, um, which would, uh, there, there's a couple of sort of angels dancing on the head of pins arguments at work here. One is that because this is a brand new entity, that there is no prior year budget. So it, it would be 87% of zero. Um, my own um, sense of that argument is that it carries literal mindedness to kind of absurd extreme. 
and that we actually have approved budgets as well as ongoing budgets from our schools so that we would, for whatever um, period which I would hope would be as limited as possible beyond June 30th, um, that we do not have uh, a budget, a voted budget, um, that we would then be able to uh, borrow funds under that statutory um, authorization. Um, <clears throat> the, my, my big worry about postponement is much less about funding the schools um, and much more about the, um, just the, the implications for, for towns. I mean, um, the, it goes, uh, it's really, in order for the towns to send out tax bills, they have to have the tax rate from the state. In order for the state to make the tax rate, they have to have the budget from the district. Um, what is almost certain to have to happen anyway, I think Worcester may be one instance, Berlin perhaps, George? All, all, all towns will have to make will have to make tax bills. But I think um, what it may entail is a special town meeting to re, uh, and this is happening regardless, um, in order to figure out when, you know, to, to basically reset the, um, the tax bill issuance dates. So my concern is, is more for the towns than for the school. Um, I'm also concerned just for the, um, the culture and practice of this board that we take ourselves seriously and um, really do a proper job as a board of going through this budget and understanding it really well, not just our portion of it as representatives with the background in, in East Montpelier, or New 32, or, or Romney, or, or Doty, but understand it for everybody, for the whole, for the whole district, because we're going, to be in a, we're going to have to be able to explain this. So from the, who, who here was, has been on the transitional board has been working on the budget? That's, well, that's, be, that's, a, that's right. significant. When you say working on the budget, it's really it's just the five approving a compilation of right. all. We did not, um, we did not, yeah. we did not can I have any We did work on it on our local boards. Our budgets so, were all. So, so in, in terms of a, if you're thinking of a continuity of a, a group that is a unity for the unified district, that has not actually occurred. Um, my difficulty with postponing action is that I don't think it will occur anytime soon. Um, so that we're going to do a um, comprehensive, detailed look at a combined budget. Uh, it will certainly need administrative input, um, and you know we're we're May twenty uh, second right now. Um, folks, we have maybe three weeks before school is out. Uh, there might be an event or two between now and the end of school, and I just don't think that we're going to get the uh, type of administrative input that we are. We, we should have, and I think Scott's right in terms of looking at a comprehensive budget, um, there's a lot that we should be looking at and taking into account. Um, I don't think there's time to do that right now. Um, I'm not worried about the funding aspect because I think even without this, um, you know, not having a previous budget, I think we were informed that, that uh, it has been worked out with our uh, banks that there will be lines of credit available even if the budget is not approved by July 1st. Uh, so I don't see that as, a, as a, um, um, an obstacle to uh, not voting on the budget. But I do see an obstacle is that we're not going to, I don't think, unless someone can convince me otherwise, have the, um, uh, the support from the administrative staff that we will need to really take a deep look at the, this budget as a whole. Uh, and I also think that even if we pass the budget and it's approved, uh, that the, uh, we can look at it later um, and see if there are needs that we think need to be addressed. Just ask the administration to reallocate money. Uh, I think we would have that power 
um, you know, wouldn't be comprehensive. And I think Scott's right about that. This is not a unified union district budget because it's, you know, maybe the parts don't make it the sum of the whole, um, but they're the parts that work for each of the individual parts and what they assume would meet their needs going forward, including, I mean, that takes into account the administrative needs because the administration uh, developed their own budget uh, that was passed. So, yeah. um, that's my Thanks, Chris. Sure. Um, any objection to having? Can I just say one thing about the process? Just process uh, for Jonathan uh, JL, JL. Um, just so you're aware, I know that the others are, that um, in August this was talked about by the executive committee of the Washington Central Supervisory Union, and it was recommended to go in this path to take the parts and sum them up into one budget if this were to happen. And that I was, was not on the board then. No, but, no, we, no yeah. but we've been explaining that. I think I've said that in many different places. Well, that was a little bit different time because it was not as clear that there would not be some type of delay. Um, mm -hmm. so that, I agree, know, so I agree, but we know, talked so about the process. We, we did. We, and had we set the process mm -hmm. there. Right. We did in terms of each school would develop its own budget, and then if it came to pass that there was going to be unification, um, um, that um, all the budgets would be added together to this now, what we're talking about. But okay. public intervention? Yeah, I think there are two points. I mean, I tend to agree with Scott as a taxpayer and as a board member. I mean, I personally think it's irresponsible to the public and to the students not to do that due diligence as a board. I'm sorry the budget hasn't been reviewed. I know I worked on the Catalyst Board budget too, and I'm on the executive committee here in all of it. So been involved with those conversations. There are people in this room who haven't, and I think you're a new board, and to rubber stamp anything as one of your first acts is a mistake. I don't think that kills, doesn't create any atomic bomb reaction out there to do that. I think it's worth taking the time to do the due diligence on that. There's another question I have in this as well, because we, and this goes into the great debate, you know, if you adopt this budget, are you assuming, I'm from the town of Callis, and I have to absorb a lot of East Montpelier and Berlin's debt, unfairly, in my opinion, but, and there's a court case surrounding this. The act of actually adopting this budget, how is this reversible? And I want you know, like a definitive answer on that. It, or is this a concession? Will this be, be seen as us accepting this forced merger. And so, you know, and I have real concern about this, you know, in advance of a decision being made. We didn't create these deadlines. We did not even create this fiscal mess that we've been put into. And you're, I feel you're in a tough place. And our kids have been put in a tough place by our legislator, legislature and by our agency of education. So, but that does not absolve us of our responsibility <coughs> as a community of people and you as a board to try to responsibly act in a way that really protects the interests of all, all the communities. Thanks, Rick. Um, Kyle. Yeah, a couple of thoughts. Um, one, we do have budgets for all six of our schools. I went out and voted for it on April 11th or whenever it was. Um, those local budgets have been passed, and <coughs> the court case that's going forward uh, is going to have at least two more decisions between now and July 1. First, the trial court is going to decide whether it's legal to shift debt in the way that the State Board of Education has forced upon us. There are very strong arguments that that's not legal. Um, I'm obviously, I. I am a lawyer, but I'm speaking purely in my personal capacity here. Um, second, uh, if the decision is for the State Board of Education on that issue, there will be an immediate request, either from the trial court or the Supreme Court or both, to put that decision on hold, put the State Board's order on hold, don't do anything until the Vermont Supreme Court analyzes these legal issues, which have never been resolved before they've come to a head as they are now. And if either the trial court rules in favor of the four towns 
that from here that have joined that case or the Vermont Supreme Court does between now and July 1, our six budgets go forward as planned and we're all set and you haven't had to bother the voters to come out again and show up in the abysmal numbers that showed up yesterday. And Millsex had, I think, 70 people who came to vote. I mean, how many votes have we had in the last few months? Um, so that's another issue. If you recommend this, will it actually pass? I mean, I don't know how many people are going to come out at the end of June on a budget vote. And the, the last thing I want to point out is the budget has two components. There's the amount you're approving to spend, and that's around 33 million. And I, I agree that that's probably going to be the right number. I mean, I don't want to see anything cut from the Rumley budget. That was worked on very closely. But there's a second part, which is how you collect that money. And I think that's page 16 of the packet. And that is being voted on just as much on this budget, because that's the practical way this gets collected under the force merger, unless the courts step in. And if I'm, I don't know which chart I'm supposed to look at, but under either of them, Callis and Worcester and Berlin's taxes are going up significantly, and East Montpelier's is going down significantly. And if you are recommending this to the voters, you are effectively recommending that Callis and Worcester's taxes go way up and East Montpelier's go down, and I don't think that's fair. I've never voted against a school budget in my life, but I don't think I could support this one. So I think if you set this for July 2nd uh, to look at this budget, give yourselves five weeks to actually do some of this work, and then by then we're going to know where this process is and you could put it to the voters at that point if need be have a vote in august and i think that's a much better time frame than the one that's been put forward here thanks Scott. so if, if there was um court intervention and either the uh, trial court stayed uh any um effectiveness of the merger based on the debt issue for the Supreme Court on, on the broad issues, issue of stay, uh, then any vote here for this budget would be null and void, and the budgets that have already been passed would go into effect, right? That's correct. With any, any vote here, I think any vote by the voters at the end of June does raise a concern of whether the towns have actually consented to this shifting of debt, and that could become an argument that's made against the four of the five towns here that are fighting that case right now. Um, and, you know, I think we've done uh, what we can to ensure through various resolutions that any vote that we are taking um, is not a relinquishment of, of our opposition, the towns that are opposed to the, the merger, um, and not uh, waiving, <coughs> waiving that argument. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, I, I, when um, arguments are made about, well, it's, it's for the kids, I think that can obscure uh, what may not be a good way path to proceed. Um, just because, you know, who's going to vote against kids? I mean, here? Anyway, is everyone going to vocalize any opposition to kids? The answer is no. Um, no one is. Um, and But there can be different views on things that have different um, impacts. Um, I, I do have a concern about just the um, staff around being nervous about not having a budget of some kind in place. Uh, and if you're talking about a, a um, postponement until basically a vote in early August, um, you know, I, I do think, and Lord, people, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, didn't we talk about the, the lines of credit being available even if there was a failed budget vote? If there's a failed budget vote. Yeah. Um, I do need to go out to bid. I'm sorry? I do need to go out to bid one way or the other. Okay, but um, the ta okay. if we went out, we haven't um, gone out to bid yet. So 
typically what would happen is if there's a budget vote for the WCU USD, I would be going out to bid to borrow money as that entity. If we're not going out to a vote, and I would have to wait until the last minute and possibly not even get a bid um, if we're separate entities. Because no, usually to borrow the money. Yeah, I understand. Right. But I, I thought we had a discussion that even if we didn't have a budget in place by July 1, uh, that it had been arranged with our banks that we'd still be able to access a line of credit. If we ever failed budget vote. I have not asked the question if we didn't have a budget vote at all what that would be. That question was not raised. Okay, and was that um, the reason that the banks gave that they were relying upon this entity being in existence? Yes. And, and eventually having the evolving power? Right. That's what I'm trying to say, okay. is if I, I would need to go out to bid as a single entity to get a you know competitive bid for July 1. Mm -hmm. um, if that entity is not going to be in place July 1, then I would need to go out to bid as separate entities as we have done in the past. Because Callus would still need to borrow money and so would East Montpelier, et cetera, if we were separate entities. So it's a different bid. We need to borrow money no matter which way we're going. Okay. And I don't think we're going to know until maybe even June 30th. I mean, that's the nature of the... But you can't get a bid in one day. A bank needs at least um, two weeks to respond to a bid, and then they need to have their boards approve the loans. So it's not like you just walk in and say, give me, you know, $10 million. Because yeah. that's ultimately what we're going out to bid for is close to $10 million. I'm just saying the practical matter, the Vermont Supreme Court decision on a stay, if it is being made there, if the trial court rules in favor of the state, is almost certainly going to be in those last two weeks of June. And so we're not going to know if we exist as separate entities or as one until that decision, most likely. Sure. I don't want to speak more than twice, so this is like this issue. So I will. No, we're not. So when I said, when I said kids, you know, I know that all of us are here for kids, but we all have been budgeting four kids together, and to, to get back into this process right now, even five weeks, it's not just up to us. If what we're going to do is, is collaborative governance, we would need the input from the administrators, right? Like, it, we would need to create that culture of how we're all going to budget together, it's, and it's, uh, it's a process that is going to take them a while to they, they haven't done this before. So we're all, we're in a special circumstances right now. I'm not saying that Worcester would be rubber stamping this, uh, this budget is it's a very unique circumstance that we're right now that we rely on having a little faith on in that leap of faith that we're putting in the people that were doing those budgets for those individual towns. Reality is that I wish we could take out the debt for East Bunker. We could just take it away. There's been efforts at the State House to submit it so that it's a five years and it's prorated. You know, there's been many issues. Real, realistically, there wouldn't be any amount of money that Ismontilla could take out that would make those taxes go down. You know, the, the bond is what it is, and and the debt of Berlin is what it is, and the debt of Middlesex is what it is. There's no amount of cutting that we could do in our schools to make those taxes go down. So, to me today, we are like I am concerned with exactly what Chris said. I'm concerned with the morale of our administrators and our responsibility to support. And of going backwards. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask the members of the transitional board. None of the issues that Kyle and Rich have talked about, these are not new. All of this uncertainty has been here for a long, long time. In putting this budget together, was there uh, there there was time to do some of this work at some point in right? Why are we addressing this now? If, if, if the process of, of simply mashing the seven budgets together was not sufficient, why are we addressing this now instead of during the previous process? Are you talking about a detailed look at the budget? Yeah. If, if that's what's necessary, it seems that the time to do that was over the last few months. It was. There, there, is, there is one element that's new to me, and this is um, what Rick mentioned, and, and then Kyle, 
about whether a yes vote on the budget would be construed as assenting to the, the debt, the transfer of the debt. And Chris is saying that we have these resolutions. Am, uh, am I, am I? Yeah, it's in the, um, and, and it's in part of the articles. Right. That we are recommended articles. Right. Um, but we've had the resolution um, during the um, organizational meeting uh, that uh, out of the votes should be construed as agreeing um, with this, you know, we, that majority of our towns oppose this forced merger and that any of the, um, you know, basically ministerial acts of moving forward because there have been no stays and, and the law is going to go into effect um, and it will go into effect uh, unless there's some judicial intervention between now and, and uh, July 1. So the votes that were taken were with the understanding uh, that we're not waiving or we're not agreeing um, that we're just, you know, doing what we're doing because of the compulsion of the law at that point in time. And when you say a majority of towns, it's a majority of school boards because yeah. the towns never got a vote on the 46. It's boards. Of school boards. Um, but then the expression through the organizational meeting, which was the representative you know, voters who come out and, you know, our, our town democracies are are measured by who actually gets to the polls and votes. But we didn't um, have a vote on X Well, we did in the organizational meeting. We did. I mean, there's a strong. It was postponed for, you know, a month or two just to, to and to get a, a decision put in forth. So there is at least in a democratic. That was a democratic vote um, for the folks who show up, and that's the way democracy works. The ones who show up and vote. Those are the voices that are heard. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so quick, Dorothy. <coughs> Um, I've been very, I've been very concerned about the debt issue. Um, I really feel like by voting for this budget, I am in essence of agreeing that I, I, uh, five towns, will share the debt. And by voting yes on this budget. To me, it sounds like I'm asking the citizens to vote yes on it, which can be construed as accepting the debt. And um, although I was at the meeting where um, we said these actions don't say we believe in being forced, I'm not so sure that by voting for this budget, the courts or someone will say, yep, you voted for the budget that has the debt payments in it, and so we assume that you will assume the debt. And I I cannot vote for this budget for that reason, and I cannot ask our citizens to vote for it. Thank you. Um, uh, Matthew, and then Rick. So just a, a couple things, a, a comment and a question. The comment is that when I believe, Scott, that you first proposed to set aside the action agenda and specifically this issue of the budget. You did it on the grounds that it wasn't fiscally responsible for this board to uh, send a budget to the voters that they haven't had a chance to review or discuss. Fiduciarily. Right. But I just note that the conversation has trended in a very different direction since then and that it seems to be more about um, opposition to the merger itself than it is to, I'm just, which I think is actually the case. Um, but I just wanted to point out that, um, that that really seems to be the subject of discussion here, um, not the fiscal responsibility piece. But I'm here as a parent of two kids who are in the school system, um, and so I'm curious to, uh, at your discretion, um, I'm curious to hear from the administrators that are in the room their sense of what the impact would be on the school system, if any, um, of moving forward into the school year with no, no voter approved budget in place. Thank you. Um, I, I told Rick when the last go, and then let's do that. I'm just going to say this, and I'll say this as a taxpayer, a resident of Calus. You know, this is the great experiment right now. Essentially, the decision making about their schools and their budgets and their kids have been taken out of their hands. 
and given to a greater group, and that is you. And now, this is a very delicate time, because we are, as Scott said, once this issue is re resolved, it's much easier to go forward in unity, because there is a choice. At this point, this, there is great debate on this issue in the courts. And if you make a bad decision on this, especially that hurts towns, Lindy, I mean, don't think that people in Callis, I don't speak for Worcester, I don't know Worcester, but Callis is very much against this. And, you know, you can talk to our whole select board and everything else. I, you I, are I, then, I, well, let me finish, please. That, you're going to create a rift between these towns, and this is going to carry forward. This is going to turn, a, you know, this is going to be life <coughs> difficult for you. If we know, once we get to some kind of point of parity, you know, where we know we have to move forward a little bit, I, yeah, the people will accept that. If you get us, if we get backed into a corner here by our own bad decision, and we are forced to move forward in spite of the courts, that is going to be a very, very bad thing for this district, and I mean for a long time. And so on the fiscal, and I said I believed every word I said, for you as a new board, one day in, to rubber stamp a budget you've never really looked at and seen, or many of you, that's fiscally irresponsible. I've managed many budget myself. You know, I would never do something like that. If we, I don't think this is going to be the end of the world if we don't do it. It's certainly uncomfortable. We didn't put ourselves in this position. We were put in this position by bad administrative, and I don't mean here, but at higher levels of decision making at AOE and in our legislature. We're here and they're in a situation they're making. It's very uncomfortable for all of us. It is very uncomfortable teachers. But don't forget, there's a lot at stake for these communities. And it's easy to say, say from an East Montpelier that who really in the short term really benefits from this. It's a real easy sell for you. When people in Cala see what's going to happen to them after really good fiscal management for years and running a good school, that is not going to sit well. And I know because I've talked to many of these people, and it's going to cause a lot of problems among in this group. And we don't want that. You know, we need to have unity decision making, but that means you're going to have to acknowledge and be willing to you know, accept some of that, understand that angst that's out there, yeah. be able to take that to the point where we just have to do it. Thanks, Ray. Um, Bill, would you like to respond to Matthew? I'll respond to Matthew, and I invite any of my colleagues Matthew, to right. respond. Um, I can tell you in a leadership team meeting that happened this spring, when we said we were at the possibility of not having a budget, and we received a memo from AOE that said, that we, in their opinion, um, we would not be getting any, we would be getting, as you said, Scott, 87% of nothing. And um, we, this was AOE? This is the Agency of Education wrote that memo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I had to say to the leadership team um, if we don't, um, if we don't have a budget, <coughs> the question went right to, how do we get our own paychecks for those of us that are sitting around the table? Because you're, you're working with people's livelihoods. They get paid literally on the first, first payroll is the first Friday or the second Friday, Lori? 14th. 14th. And Lori and I have not asked the question, as she said, about if there was not a budget proposed by the board. We've only asked if there was a board, whether it was failed or whether it passed and we knew that we could lend to that. I have not seen my colleagues more unraveled in any of my times be here. I'll let them take it from there. So can you follow up question? Was no. not asking about no budget strategic commission or um, because that's, that was certainly a possibility? No, I no, it was not, Chris. No, it's because the current law says yeah. part of the formula that I put in your board packet a while ago showed that part, um, having a uh, voter-approved budget was part of the formula. Okay, but so that's been part of the formula the for budget. 25 years or more. It's a federal formula. So having a zero budget isn't part of that formula. So it wouldn't have even crossed anyone's mind. 
What did the budget pay next month? You still have a proposed budget. That's where the line of credit kicks in. Um, but having an entity is the first step in the process. So by not taking forward a budget means we basically do not have an entity so going we forward. Do, well, we do have an entity because this is it right here, um, and you know it was voted with, with this entity that was going to take effect on July first. So if there was a proposed budget, um, but it was not put out for a vote. Um, is that a different scenario then? You yeah. mean, I'm not hearing this. Meaning like, if, you, if we said, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to um, um, recommend this budget, but we're not putting out for a vote yet. I mean, I don't think there's any mechanism that says, once you um, approve a budget, that you have to put it out to a vote within a certain period of time. What you do have to do is, when you want to have a vote, you have to warn it in advance a certain period of time. So you can actually, I think, propose the budget, recommend the budget, um, and then just delay putting it out for a vote for a week or two, um, and then have the warning go from there. So um, under that scenario, if there was a proposed budget, uh, would the uh, lines of credit that we'd already talked about um, be available? It sounds like you have a lot of legal questions, and I would appreciate those going in the minute and then sharing those with the two lawyers that specialize in school finance. Okay. That would be really helpful. I am not a lawyer, and I've never done this before. And you don't okay. want to play one on TV? <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, Chris, that um, the banks, and tell me if I'm wrong, Laura, but they usually look for the minutes and motions from our meetings when we go for, you know, this is a bidding opportunity for mm -hmm. a line of credit and for loans. So they're looking at that when we're putting together those RFPs for money. Mr. Church, could you ask the administrators to share what 87% will mean for, for example, the high school? Um, this is 87% of the total budget. But, so or, yeah, but what would it mean? This is going to be percentage. Um, it would be something in each school, right? That, that would... It's not, I, 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 don't think it's, uh, no. I don't think it's depressed right away. So you have a 13% cut across the board. You basically, you run I think at money. the end, you can borrow up to 87% yeah. and fully fund all the way to the operations until you have a, a budget. Yeah. That's, that's one and way to do it. interest on the one that we've yeah. borrowed. Yeah. That the supervisory meeting budget was never a past budget. I'm just to, I don't know whether that's an issue or not, but it was a big, big number. Thanks. Um, Scott, you, Matthew. On. Matthew, thank you. I just want to put another plug for my question. For, um, from other administrators. Sure. Yes. Sure. Anybody want to? Um, it, I'm Matt, I'm from Dodi. Um, I stayed out of this debate, I don't live in this community for a really long time. Um, and I always felt that the experience of the kids was safe. Um, I stopped feeling that a few months ago, and I'm really feeling that right now. Um, because it really feels like to me that, that this body is sort of playing chicken with the kids' experience. Um, and particularly at Doty, 87% uh, of our current operation would cripple us uh, because our, we are so small, making that type of significant adjustment in, in our budget would be absolutely crippling. Um, so I, I, from my perspective, as, as the leader of the building, um, I think it's very important that we propose a budget tonight. Uh, just to be clear, um, to be, it's we're not talking about not having a budget at all. <clears throat> it's just about <clears throat> deferring until, <clears throat> pardon me, until we have a proper opportunity to to review it as a board, all members equally, not just those who were involved in the transition board or, or other things. Respectfully, Scott, I, I find that. Um that decision very risky for the kids. In what way? In that, um, 
we need to be able to plan fully and prepare fully for next year. I had a teacher ask me today, can I put my order in for next year? This is a conscientious person thinking thoughtfully um, about what they want to do for next year. Um, we would need to make adjustments if we did not, if we weren't certain that we could fund the, the, the school and the budget 100% for, for next year, the way it's articulated in the packet you have before you. This budget would be, and this would be resolved long before that 80% ever got showed us. You yeah. make so I just have to kind of, um, <laughs> uh, good, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, I'd like to actually speak to the Washington Central Summer Program. We have a program that starts on July 9th, mm -hmm. and we have about 80 to 90 kids that arrive, um, and about 20 staff. And if I don't have a budget, we're taking that opportunity away from kids. And I can assure you, given the special ed process, we will have lawsuits to follow because we are obligated to meet IDPs. So I think we're thinking a little short-sighted here. And I am a resident of Berlin. My taxes are gonna go up, but it's what our kids need. Thank you. Okay, um, Kyle. And then I think we're gonna need to start moving towards decision. I just, I just have to respond to the phrase short-sighted because I, in the next few months, the decision about whether we keep our local boards or we're in a merge board is going to be made by the Vermont Supreme Court. And I think they should be able to make that purely based on what's in front of them now. And we shouldn't be giving them votes that could be interpreted as consent. And I just, I don't, I've got three kids at Romney. I don't think it's chicken at all. They, they will, that school is going to be functioning. We pass local boards and it, I think there is, really no risk that the agency of education is going to say oh july 1 you have 87 percent of zero i mean there's in vermont there's a principle against interpreting statutes in a way that would lead to absurd results and someone already used the phrase absurd in referring to what that would be and so i think the worst case scenario that money would be there and it's a hundred percent available from day one, so you don't have to make any adjustments so long as this gets figured out by March or April. And we will have a decision from the Vermont Supreme Court by then. And what's short term is the next couple months. What's long term is what our districts are gonna be living with for 100 years. I mean, that's how long the current system has been in place. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Um, Jen. I just, um, I mean, I would like a little time just to figure out what the economic impacts are going to be on the households in Worcester, because um, from an economic justice perspective, I mean, when a family can't meet their bills and can't have to cut things because they can't afford it because, you know, they have to pay more on their taxes or something, it can add stress to the family and, and <coughs> and that can be taken out on the children. So I think it's important, I mean, I value teachers a great deal and I don't want, I know they have families to take care of too, um, but we have to look at this in, a, in kind of a real life way, like how is this gonna impact people in a real life way? And if we could take a little bit of time to really look through it carefully, um, I think that's kind of our duty. Thank you, Jonas. Um, it, it, I think Matthew's right that there are two issues at play here, and one is the idea of fiscal responsibility and getting the process right, and one is trying to, and I, I don't want to misrepresent anyone, but it seems like the, the other conversation that we're having is about preventing the merger from happening and to staying things until the Supreme Court weighs in. So I, I want to ask Dorothy and Jael. I think you, you've sort of expressed this, um, that the idea that there is inequity in what will happen to the tax rates in the different towns, and that you can support a budget that will do that, and that you, seems like you won't support a budget that will 
increase taxes in one town while lowering taxes in another town. What I'm concerned about is that we that that sentiment sort of leads us to a place where we're not going to approve a budget until that is resolved. That does not seem to be in our hands. And if there was a way that we could allay Kyle's concern that anything that we do here may you know, indicate assent, if we can mitigate that, I know that there are people trying to work on the tax issue. Right. It's not that if we you know, propose or approve a budget today that this goes away. Um, under what circumstances would you be willing to support a budget? Or does that tax issue need, do you need closure on that issue before a significant portion of this body is willing to move forward on that? Jonas, I think that's actually an excellent question. Um, what I would like, though, because I'm looking at the clock, um, rather than have Dorothy and Jaya answer it, uh, I think it's a question that may be dealt with at a second stage. What I'd like to do um, is, if I may, it, I, I have suggested that we defer the action agenda um, am I allowed to make a motion as chair? Yes, you are. Sure. I am. Okay. Um, would anybody second? Depends on what it is, Scott. Uh, to defer the, uh, oh, no. okay. oh, Stephen, sorry. I, I apologize, um, Scott, but um, you've asked about the administrators. Yes. Um, and um, I, would, I would just like to offer to this body that um, this is my 15th year working on school budgets, and it's the least understood year for me in doing the school budget. Um, it is, there have been a lot of things that are said here. I've been through two systems, both Connecticut and Vermont, and how they do it. They're equally messed up in the ways that they do funding for public schools. Um, but I would just say that you ask of me as an administrator to plan for how things will occur. Right? I don't plan for tomorrow, I plan for next year, I plan for well into next year, um, because that is my job as an administrator. I am uncertain, and what I need the board to provide is some levels of certainty of what funding will be available, when that will be available, and how we will meet our obligations. And I, I'm not going to interject myself into your discussions about how you're going to do that, but my request of you is that these decisions are made in a very timely manner so that we can make the decisions that we need to make for our school. And I recognize as a resident of Berlin that this will affect my taxes, however this occurs. Um, but I say as an administrator to you, the more uncertainty that you keep in the system, the longer that you keep that uncertainty in the system, the less well prepared that we are as a school to serve your children. And that's the problem that we had. The, the problem that Bill explained around the table wasn't just that we don't know if we're going to be paid in the summer. We don't know that our staff is going to be paid in the summer. We don't know how to open the building next school year because we are unclear of how the process is going and when it will end. And that's the part that creates the most anxiety for us because you asked me to be responsible for 750 kids, over 100 faculty members and staff. I can't answer the question of how I'm going to, to do the work that I'm supposed to do. And I recognize that there are different budgets, and I understand that there are timelines for these. But until you as a board can, can start to answer those questions, you handcuff us in the work that we do. And that's why I think that it's important that you come to a consensus as quickly as possible. Granted, I know that you need to discuss these things as well. But that's the feeling that we have, and that's the anxiety that we face. Thank you. Yes. Good. So um, I'm going to then refine my motion to defer a vote on the budget and warning. Basically, the, um, yeah. Uh, 
And if there's a second, we can quickly move to a vote on it. And um, if that goes down, then we can have a vote on whether to approve the budget. Does that sound, does that sound okay? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, um, I, I haven't heard anything. I, I, I guess the other option, if I don't propose that option, would be that if time is needed, like there's nothing more important right now that understanding the budget, that we just start right now. We just take a look at that budget. What you need is to be informed in that budget. You know, everybody that we need is here at the table. It's not going to take very, very long. We can start looking at the budget. If, if really it's just for being fiscally responsive, that's not just rubber stamp this. Let's go buy school right now. If um, it's about if it's about fiduciary, fiduciary. Versus let's, let's do it now. It is 7:30. I I'll stay here until 10 if that's what's necessary. But we'll just we'll get it done if that's really the issue. That's mm -hmm. that's um, admirable for, but I, I don't think that really satisfies the fiduciary responsibility issue because one has to be able to deliberate. But I, I don't want to um, continue that. I, if I don't get a second on my on my motion, then it dies. Mm -hmm. So officially, what is the motion? I the motion is to defer a vote on the budget and warning. I'll second. Okay, um, I think we've discussed it probably enough. So, um, all in favor of, do you have a question, Chris? Well, I was gonna offer a, an amendment. Okay. Um, although, can, does the amendment live or die with the motion? Um, what did you say? The amendment would li would die with, if the motion dies, or live okay. if it lives. Because uh, my amendment would go to the debt issue, and that um, to this this is what this if the if the motion fails, right. the deferral motion, then that's I think what you're talking about is exactly what Jonas was asking about a moment ago. To move on on, on to that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going for amendment. Then. Okay. Okay. So, vote on uh, whether to defer the vote on the budget, and one. All in favor? Um, maybe say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. No. Nay. Okay. The nays have it. So now, let's move to a vote on the, I guess, approve the WCUUSD budget. Um, I think we've discussed it in great detail, and now... <coughs> really. we, we, we discussed in great deal to vote or not vote for it, but we didn't yes. discuss the True. actual budget. Okay. Would it make Sorry, sense, any excuse me, to, to just reaffirm um, what was stated at the organizational meeting, saying that this does not constitute um, our agreement um, with the union. Um, we should make that as part of the motion. Yes. Part I mean, that statement is part of the motion. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to find it, Dorothy? <laughs> okay. We'll let Dorothy find it and yeah. read it out. That's a great idea, George. Here it is. <coughs> um, what page? 47. Oh, page 47. Actually, Kyle's uh, motion was is in uh, both. Yes. Do you want to read it? Oh, I can read it. I'll read it. Nothing that happens tonight shall be interpreted as consenting in any way to a forced merger. That's what that says. I'm wondering if we can... If we vote on that separately? I would suggest that you do. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's vote on that separately. Well, you know, if we combine it with... Budget motion, then it cannot be pulled out from it. Yeah, it, well, it's more powerful, I think, combining it with if we're going to recommend approval of the budget, knowing, you know, with the um, caveat that voting to approve the budget is not consenting to the forced merger, can, can uh, we, then it, th those are hard, that you can't pull that apart. So could, that, could, okay. could we add? Consenting in any way to the forced merger or the debt? Whatever language. 
No, the, I think it's subsumed in the yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. So, how would we phrase this then? Um, to approve the WC UUSD budget in the amount of in the amount of thirty-four million thirty-three million eight hundred seventy-four seven sixty-nine. It's on page two. Right. Do you have that, Lisa? Thirty-three million eight hundred fifty-four thousand seven hundred sixty-nine. Okay, this shall not be interpreted. And okay, you got that part? Yes. Okay. And this shall not be interpreted as consenting in any, in any way to a forced merger. Who's it is uh, is that your whose motion is this anyway? I'll make it. Okay. I'll check it Okay. Okay, now um, Does everybody understand what this budget is? It's basically uh, a mashup of the six school budgets and the central office budget. There, <clears throat> there's one part that, because the central office budget is now part of this bigger thing, it, it shows, it, it looks nominally higher than if you were to have added in the, um, the six school budgets because of the, um, the special education um, uh, revenue and expenses and revenue. So I say just add to you, it's not just special education. It's not just okay. Okay. transportation. Transportation, and there are other federal grants that go through as well, okay. and other reimbursements. So. Um, does anybody need this explained? I'd be glad to explain this, or Lori and I would be glad to explain this in a lot more detail. Just to, so for the record, this is on page 17. I'm actually on page page two right now. Right, but, but there, there, there is a text explanation. There is a text explanation of the of the services that are provided in the cost <coughs> through cent, through the central office. That's on page 17. And we'll be talking about that in the annual report. But that just showed with those different pieces. You can see what the less revenues and what the deductions are under the different functions. That's probably the best way to say it. And we have to show, in any budget, you have to show your total expenses and your total revenues. Because what was billed with the supervisor union structure was the net cost was then passed on to the districts and shown in those budgets. The, Total expenditures and total revenues was always shown in this supervisory union budget. But the voters don't vote on that in the supervisory union structure. The local the represent the members of the supervisory union board do. And so there's an increase um, that Dave's written about in the Times Argus. We've talked about in several meetings that we have to show the total revenues and the total expenditures. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's right. As well. yeah, yes, the, on page eight, there's one that's in the letter. Really from the last paragraph. This is, and this is what will be going out to the voters. We're, we're going to talk about that at a different point, but okay. yes. yes. All right. The crucial point is that the education spending, which is the, um, the component of the tax rate, is the same from, one, from the sum of the school budgets that have already been passed to this particular combined budget, unified budget. Um, any other questions or shall we move to a vote? Right, sorry, Jim. Yeah, I would like to talk about this some more. I think Floor's idea of going through this as closely as we can right now makes a whole lot of sense. If we have agreed not to defer on it and there are significant questions about fiscal responsibility, making sure we do our due diligence, like my bedtime's not for a while. I'd love to talk about this. We do have children home alone because their father is in Florida with his ailing grandmother, so yeah. I can't stay. Yeah, uh, my preference is to observe a certain time discipline wherever possible. And um, I, if I might, if I might return to this, um, I noticed that uh, Michael. Dwayne. Yes, Michael Dwayne. Yeah. Is this a, an appropriate time if a member of the public has a comment on the budget or a statement? 
we're voting on that. No, no, no. no. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Because oh, if you're going to take it up and vote on it. Um, Michael Duane, uh, East Montpelier. Um, there's been a lot of good talk about uh, um, supporting teachers and administrators here. And uh, I, I'm concerned that the Vermont School Boards Association has brought a legal action against the teachers in front of the uh, State Labor Relations Board over health care negotiations. <coughs> and the Vermont School Boards Association also has been taking, in my opinion, some terrible positions at the legislature and not representing all of the school boards. So as a taxpayer uh, and someone who supports teachers and administrators as well, I think they may be part of it also, that this action by the Vermont School Board Association to bring a legal case against them over their health care negotiations is just a terrible thing. Uh, as well as the position they took at the legislature. So I, I would ask, recommend that uh, this unified board budget uh, remove any funding for the Vermont School Boards Association. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I suggest making that a future agenda item. Yeah, I would suggest that you could talk about that later and whether you want to pay that invoice or not. And when, when's it then? It would be somewhere next fall. I do not know the time. Chris, because I just don't. I'm just, have just asking so, because so it doesn't get paid. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. Right. yeah. In the meantime, so I will just put it on our next next agenda. meeting agenda. I beg your pardon. Put it on our next meeting agenda. It's it's agenda. Future agenda. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm just wondering which is the tax rate that applies to this budget. I see two boxes on page sixteen. Lori, do you want to okay. um, This is the old format. We had updated it later to show the common level of appraisal, and that version is not here tonight. Um, but the bottom is the equalized tax rate, which assumes that every town has 100% appraisal, right at fair market value. So the box above is the actual, so you can kind of see the discrepancy between who's at 100% and who is above or below 100% appraisal. I'm just wondering, as a taxpayer, which am I going to be paying? Oh, you taxes? would be physically paying the top box? OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. And what is a 12 cent increase for palace? What's that in actual dollars? Um, <laughs> that would be on a $100,000 property, $123. So two hundred thousand dollar property, two hundred four forty six. So are you expecting that towns are going to vote in favor of this budget? We've been assuming that. I think that's worth thinking about. And that is prior to income sensitivity, which over fifty percent of the taxpayers receive in the town of Dallas. Because it, it just goes with what you do with looking at the budget. I mean, Michael has identified an item I fully support removing from the budget, and payments to the SBA. There's also $212,000 that we pay to the Board of Education. That's the uh, defendant on the other side of the case where we're saying you shouldn't have forced us into this situation. I assume some chunk of that we have to pay, but well, I don't understand. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Kyle. Uh, but Kyle, that may be for this board rather than for the um, state board. What page is on? That's on page 14. About where? Oh. Uh, probably on the Board of Education Services. That's this board that's and the, all the board. That's boards. not the state board. That's it's not, not the state board. board. We don't pay anything to the state, state board. board. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're an independent. Yeah. They actually pay us because we receive, we do not collect enough tax dollars in all our five towns or any of them individually to meet the budget, the educational expenses for the pre-K through 12 services for kids. Okay, so, um, I would say the taxpayers pay us. The state of Vermont the tax, state, the Vermont yeah. ta state taxpayers, what statewide. Was it? statewide, we right. receive right. more money than we raise in our educational tax dollars in our five towns. Just, yeah. Because the way the system works is all the money goes to the state to get back based on the per pupil expenditure. Yeah. Um, Mary Lynn? So, what I have a couple questions. What is the risk of voting this budget down? Does that put us right back into the conversation we were just having about just yeah. the 80s? And then, um, 
what is our absolute deadline of having to vote on this budget? I mean, if we if if we weren't to all agree on this budget tonight, what is the latest that we come together again and really comb through this budget without getting us back into the conversation we just had? We've we've basically settled that question that um, we're not coming back to it for a vote. Um, we're, the vote is happening now. <laughs> can, I give so, you a, can I give a point of information? Because I think she asked a clear question uh -huh. that should do, do, deserves actually a calendar qu answer. Uh-huh, okay. So it has been talked about along the way by uh, either the transition boards or other boards that the best time to have a vote for the budget as late as possible is June 25th, which is a Tuesday. Which we already talked about. Okay. And so to meet June 25th, <clears throat> you must warn a budget, you must post a warning 30 days in, in mm -hmm. prior. So you must have the warning adopted and posted by May yeah. 26th. I We moved it back as we talked about this timeline to this Friday being the last day. One of the problems is, is that all but one of our town clerks, now two of our town clerks work on Fridays part days, the rest of them do not work on Fridays. And we, although Mary Ornsby is the one that does the posting, we'd like some help from them as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only fair to them because they're prepping elections. Um, and we've been trying to keep to one election for them as well. Mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I want to be really clear about what the timeline restrictions are. You. Um, and be giving information. So if you were to change that vote date, then you, you know, it's all, a, for lack of better, a better metaphor, a deck of cards. Once you pull one, then you pull other things. Yeah, well, that's, that's I want you to be clear on that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, we, we picked Tuesday because of the condition of voting on Tuesday. Tuesday so, yeah. so, the, so I think it's, <coughs> you could actually move the date closer to 30th. You could, but but you 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 know people aren't used to voting on other days than Tuesdays and things like that. And yeah. So but that would buy a couple of days, uh, and you know there wouldn't be anyway. Just yeah. that's just a Appreciate technical it. issue. Yeah. No, it's, it's good. So um, is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, any other any other sort of targeted questions about the budget? I, I wish we could. I, I wish I had the stamina to. Well, you know, to I, come again, I have a question for the transitional board because what was the what was the vote on the transitional board to forward this budget to this board? Unanimous. Yeah. unanimous. That was unanimous. Yes, it was unanimous. That was unanimous. Actually, and and uh, to, to, do, do, to give it to this board for sure. action, so to transmit it, it was. And I'll tell you, my idea was in voting. That this board would look at it in the sense of it's been recommended to us, it's been looked at, and they would move forward with it. Is is that the sense That's of the my other members? personal no. sense? No. no. Okay. This I did so not expect another delay. So, I, so what I what I can say to the to the board members that haven't been board members before, we're not part of the transitional board in the it's certain the in the picture, it, you know. To, to me, at least, after uh, is that all of this budget support, our uh, multi care supports, our interventions for kids, so what's best for kids, it supports professional development, it uh, supports collaboration in our schools, it supports the trauma informed practices in our schools, and uh, I'm trying to, you know, and it supports all of the special education that, that, we, that, that we do too. So most of this. High of money is in uh, learning, salary well, in, in a salary, yeah, in in, in learning, keep it right. right. Keep it, so so that is sort of the I feel, and I, you know, the administrators here can correct me if I'm misinterpreting. The, I, that's sort of the big the big picture from that pie because you guys haven't been involved in budgeting, so we put a big pie and we try mm -hmm. to make. The, the learning pie, the biggest part of the pie. And <coughs> so if that is of any comfort. So, well, I mean, I, I, I guess, I, you know, to go back to the question I asked before, 
you know, is the sense that the, the allocation of funds is appropriate, but it is the funding mechanism that results in tax inequities that is the stumbling block here. Is that big word? Yeah. Do, 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 I, do I understand that correctly? Yeah. I think and, 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 that, and that inequity is not getting resolved anytime soon, one way or the other. Correct. Right. Yeah. So I, we, are, we are in a bind. Um, we are, you know, we're here. This very board is here, you know, you know uh, against the will of a number of people. Um, and yeah, and it's a hard it, it, situation. It, it, it is a, it, it is a, it's a hard situation, but again, I want to ask the question, what mitigation of the tax issue would be necessary for people to support this, these outlays? Um, my understanding is there is none possible. <laughs> yeah, it's the debt. Well, it's a resolution of the debt it, issue. It, I think it depends on how old you want to be. Um, because one of the articles says that you can't alter the debt, you can't right. not share the debt. Um, and um, you know, as a board, I think we could um, institute a, a policy where the tax rate varies depending upon what town brought what debt. Um, you know, subject to challenge, potentially subject, let me finish, potentially subject to legal challenge, but at least establishing that market. Now, Judge Mello, in one of his decisions, was troubled, and that's what Kyle was referring to, was troubled by the debt issue of towns who didn't vote on a debt are now uh, being forced to pay it. Um, and for us, it's Callis and it's, and it's Worcester. Uh, they have no debt. I mean, you look at the zeros across the board here, and they are assuming a significant portion of the other towns. Callis in particular. No. Well, well, by, by, by the rates that I well, see, Callis yes, has no debt either. So, I, 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 so I, I, I taking understand that. Judge Mello at his word, and perhaps he'll have written a decision dealing with the debt issue, um, but running with that, uh, it, I, I don't see why we wouldn't take a stab at it and then have someone sue us for being unfair because we're trying to equalize, you know, be equitable about assuming others' debt. And now others would quibble with that, saying, well, it's not others, it's all our debt now. But, you know, the origin of the debt was not our, it was... Sure. I, I, I'm sorry. Um, is it okay? No, so so I just want to say, and I would want to check it with our school attorney, the state is the only one that can levy school taxes and tax rates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not this board, not the local boards. Mm -hmm. The only, when, since Act 60, the state took control to be the only one that can lower the, the tax rate for school in the towns. I want to check that. I don't want to say I'm 100% right, but that's my recollection. Yeah. I, I, is that right? So it, it is, yeah. Um, in my, in so my estimation. Um, make efforts to do something. <laughs> within and, and, within and power and power. I'm sure those efforts have been made by everyone here, mm -hmm. all the, on all the boards, right? Yeah. Am I right? If this is the big sticking issue, like, have we exhausted all of those? Yeah, it's not like a town is saying we want you to pay for us. Yeah, of course. So, uh, Jaya? Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, Fleur, and then shall we move to a vote? No, yeah, I was just, because he was in the sentence. So yeah, I cut him off. Oh, okay. Chairman Prerogative. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm, I, I'm coming here assuming that everybody's here in good faith and nobody wants to, nobody wants to, punish another town, right? And that this is the situation right. that we are in. Yes, that's um, exactly right. And that's, that's why it's the, the discussion is so fraught and yet so necessary at the same time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It, it just seems to me that we're in a position where we may not approve a budget and we may refuse to approve a budget until all avenues have expired of either undoing the merger or of finding a way to resolve the debt issue. That seems that seems very problematic to me, especially hearing the concerns from the educators. Right. I understand that that issue. I'm you know I'm a taxpayer. I'm a homeowner. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's right. And hopefully, well, we have um, Lisa. Would you like to? Shall we move to a vote then? Yes. Um, Lisa, may I impose on you, please, to yes. read the motion? Yes. Um, where is it? Um, oh, yeah, okay. Um, Dorothy Naylor 
approve, to approve the WCUUSD budget in the amount of thirty-three million eight hundred fifty-four seven hundred six million dollars, and that this shall not be interpreted as consenting in any way to a forced merger. Great. Okay. Um, and it was seconded by Chris. By Chris. All right. Ready for the vote. All in favor of that motion, as read just now by Lisa, please say aye. 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 All opposed? None opposed. Okay, it carries you now. I would like to say one thing. Please. Some people have said that people who are against the, were against the budget, were against the merger, should not have been elected. I was only against the budget because of the debt. It doesn't mean I'm against the merger. And I think that's probably true of some other people. And that has been said a couple of times before, and I don't like it. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Because the Act 46, that word forced, people use it like forced, and I think the debt has been a major part, not about working together. I think people want to work together. And I think the five towns have worked together under governance exactly. for years. For we years. Can. We have and we can. But the debt is the problem. Mm -hmm. OK. So we have a, um, we need a warning. Um, yes. OK. Rick? Uh, I just want to say very quickly, I mean, as a resident of Calus, it's much more than the debt for me. It's the fact that I do not have the ability as a town of Calus, you know, to prevent a school closure, which a school which we have paid for, which we have maintained over time, and that that could be overridden by a yeah, greater group. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. You can oh, do it, but I want to make it clear that it is much more than debt, that yeah, opposition I, yeah. to this. It's not a one issue, it's one not issue. a one issue situation. I don't think it is for most of the people in this room. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I wouldn't yeah. answer that because there was the significant amount of loss of local not being control over uh, the pool of well. It's not solely the debt issue. Exactly. But I don't want to, uh, that, that's a, once again, sort of open up a big topic. I'd just like to get to the warning, if I may. Um, On page so, six, you will see the warning. So this is the budget warning. This is the budget warning. Um, I have, uh, I, we gave you two warnings uh, on <coughs> advice by the attorney, Chris Leopold, who the transition board and mm -hmm. further boards had suggested working with. So he suggested having a budget warning. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. Good. Yeah, I think that's, that was a very good suggestion. Does um, does anyone have any questions about the warning? Apart from, it does seem to have to make reference to the um, being 3.7% higher than spending for the current year. So there is a kind of yeah. There's a there's a we had to we had to put something in there for percentage okay. because we're required by statute to use that exact language for that article. As okay. many of you are aware, we cannot change that by law when you go to a budget vote. It's basically that you uh, insert the numbers. Okay. But we can clarify that it includes the, it's because of the central union. You, you can, you don't, no, no, that 3.7 isn't there, that, no, that's just, you have to, you have to compare equalized spending and we have per people. So that, that 3.7 isn't analog to the 1.65% budget change on no, page two? No, it is not, okay. because that's an expenditure change. This is the spending per equalized people. You could spend the same amount in two years, and your equalized peoples could fluctuate. The number of peoples could either go up, therefore lower the spending per equalized people, or go down and therefore raise it. So there are other factors that hit that number. Great. So can we have a uh, motion? To accept the warning. Uh, the the motion. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Um, discussion. Uh, I'll just start. Dorothy has identified, I think, a typo. Uh, I don't know, but it says out of one, two, three, four, fifth line down, it refers to articles one through five below, but I don't. She'd only have article one. 
Okay. So we will correct that. Thank you, Dorothy. Okay. Um, before we go to Kyle, is there any... Um, Kyle, did you have something that you wanted to mention? Yeah, uh, two things. One, just thinking of what I'm going to do when I get in the voting booth, um, as someone who fully supports the, the schools and teachers and everything, I think that language you talked about, about nothing supports a forced merger, should be placed in this warning in Article 1, so that that's clear, that if you check the box, yes, you're not in any way saying a forced merger. Second thing is, one of the supposed benefits of a merger is transparency and accountability. And nothing in this warning tells me that Callis's taxes are going up 12 cents, Berlin's about five, Worcester's five and a half, Millsack's right. basically the same, and East Montpelier's dropping by eight cents. If you want transparency and accountability, Correct. that needs to be front and center. Um, 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 thank you very much. Uh, um, the first of those points, I think Bill just mentioned that um, the language, we can't really change that language, that statutory language. Um, so although it would be great if we could, you know, um, kind of pin that, pin the tail on that donkey. Um, uh, these are you saying we can't add language? language? Yeah. What? Are you saying you can't add language? You cannot add language to it. You cannot change it. The state, the state was very three. Was it three years ago, Lori, or four? That this that came into Title 16. We do not have any control over the language for a budget adoption. The board does not, and we do not. We have to follow it exactly as. And they were very tight about it. Oh, wait, so we, we just we just amended language here to take out Article just what Five. No, 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 no. I in, in the oh, article, which one? Which is in article. article. Okay, so in the anywhere article, else in the warning, yeah, we that, can, those other places you can, but you can, in the okay. article you cannot change the language. Okay, so we can we can add language elsewhere in the article. No, not not in the, the article. article. No, no, not the article. Not article one. Not the indentation. The right. indentation right. is that for saying. Um, but elsewhere. We can add language. Have we ever had on a, that, on a budget warning like really this is affecting your tax rate by a certain percentage? Um, well, I'm just curious. Has anybody no, ever had that? No, typically that goes out in the in the <laughs> package, the package, but right. not on the right. but, we, but not on the ballot itself. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so we have that information, Kyle. We have that information for everybody. Yes, <laughs> but but that's an interesting suggestion. It's in our annual letter. So like in the preamble, no. the preamble. Yeah, I would like to see it. Is that possible, Bill? I do not know. I'd have to consult uh, the attorneys that draft these up for us because they're very particular. It's very particular, and I am not qualified to tell you what you can or cannot have on a warning. And so we're going to be going to. I would want to get that answered. Okay. And then have you come back together as a board to approve that warning? Yeah, I'm not sure that's so so. Great. Um, how about how about it would be great? Well, um, um, yes, and the, reason, the reason being that this is the first um, of these budgets, and um, Kyle makes a fair point about transparency mm -hmm. as to what the direct impact of this budget will be on on the towns, uh, and also the, the idea that if by voting, and it kind of relates to the issue that Dorothy uh, was talking about in terms of voting for this, saying being a concession that you are agreeing to assume the debt. By having that warning there saying that just voting for this doesn't mean that you are doing that and shouldn't be construed that way. And you don't, this is the year if we do it, that you do it because likelihood the Supreme Court will have decided by next year at this time. Uh, and you either won't need it, won't need it at that point. Yeah. So, um, um, would you use the same language that we just had in the motion for the, I would. Um, I would. As a standalone paragraph, um, and probably first paragraph after the article. So it's very clear, and, and I, I think I would incorporate uh, the impact, tax impact on the individual towns in that paragraph as well. Yeah. Um, I, I think because we have the tax impact in the, in the information package, mm -hmm. that if we risk. Um, Confusing about Yeah, um, right. I, 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 I kind of like the idea of the, um, you know, nothing 
nothing uh, will should be interpreted as consent, simply because uh, it's likely to get the budget more likely to be passed in callous, at least. Um, but, uh, Laura. When, let's say, so our work doesn't end today with, with this, so this is just putting the, the, the budget out, the warning. We still have to talk about having a public meeting, and then how do we bring this information out? That would be our responsibility, Trans making sure that it's transparent, making sure that our communities mm -hmm. understand what they're voting for. And we're going to have, tonight, very true. little time to talk about those other responsibilities. I don't mean to be short. I just no, like no. it's it's A ten, so yeah. you know, this is just part of that responsibility right now, right? We we need to have a public meeting and yeah. we need to inform. So in, in terms of um, <coughs> the direct delivery of information to voters at a time that is useful to them, I can't think of any better time when they're actually casting their ballot and looking what they're voting on. Um, we can have all the public meetings we want, but if folks aren't showing up to them, um, they're not going to get it. But when they're going to the voting booth and they're looking at what they're voting on, uh, that is a time when they're going to be reading it. And um, I, I just, I don't, I, it, it confuses me. So you know me. the warrant, can I just say, yeah. the warning is not in the, bo in the polling place. <laughs> well, the, the, article, the, the article, the article is. The article is. The well, article is the only thing on the ballot, That's right. Chris. Okay. So you have, I would suggest to you, you have other ways to communicate that. Can we put it on the ballot? No, you, you can't, unless you do it. <coughs> I mean, not, not change the language of the article. I think what he's saying is, and I don't want to go along with it, but I think what he's saying is that first paragraph won't even be on the ballot. Right. No, only the article. Yeah, only, only the article. The article. We can't so, change. so the warnings get published in the paper? The warnings will be published in the paper. They will be published in your annual report. You can go to many places that you'd like to publicize it, but you can't bring it into the voting booth. It'll be on our website. Yeah. We need to inform our voters. Right. You know that is our responsibility, and make sure that they understand it. They just not understand just the numbers. You know, even for us, looking at this is is confusing. So yeah. we have to plan. For that transparency. There's one thing about the information that I have been bothered with, and I may have a bad memory, but it seems to me that I read somewhere that the, the that um, annual report was not going to be simply mailed out, that people would have to ask for it. At the district organizational meeting, it was voted to do it that way, to send right. out postcards. So, and uh, people could get it electronically oh, or okay. ask for it, copies. We are going to be sending out the postcards. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yes. have to. Yes. We have to do that. Yeah. And then we could put copies of it in public places if we wanted to. Yeah. Like town offices. Which we're, right? we're set up for that. Store. Okay. We have a motion on the table. Um, Rick? I would say, you know, just as taxpayer, this is your first budget year as a consolidated board. You had better have a billboard at every one of those voting places saying this because. Now, this is exactly how the people are going to interpret that, and certainly in the town of Calus. I understand Worcester will, I mean, uh, East Calus will jump up and cheer. They've got a drop in their tax rate. But when Calus sees a 12 cent rise and they are going to say, this is done on the sly, <laughs> next year you're going to have, you know, 500 no's out of that town. I don't think and well, I, you know, <laughs> I don't there, this is how that is going to be interpreted by people. When they, they, in good confidence, vote on something and they don't have numbers, and all of a sudden they see a 12 cent. Well, yeah, I know these people better than that. I don't think anyone in East Montpelier is going to be jumping up in joy because their neighbors have to pay more tax. My right. point was, no, there's a dropping, but in Calus, a 12 cent rise is a very big, especially for a town that is very fiscally conservative, they, they're careful with their budgets, and having that, and they, it was already forced on them, and it is, that's not too strong a word, we're forced to assume debt against our will, and you know, when they vote on a budget without having clear facts in front of them, I will guarantee you, you <laughs> this board is gonna have a hard time going forward I certainly won't vote for this budget, and I tell you there are a lot of people who won't. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's unfair. It's, unfair. it's just unfair, so. Yeah, thank you. Um, motion on the table. To, uh, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the motion without 
without the uh, the warning without the addition, but with the fix to the typo. Yeah, we'll fix the typo. Okay. okay. Yeah, sorry. So, um, ready for a vote? Yes. So I'm going to move to amend the warnings because I don't think I moved to amend it yet. No, you haven't. Okay, so I'm going to do that to include uh, the caveat that we attended we attended to the uh, budget itself of. Uh, um, voting for this budget in no way um, waives any, it, it should be construed as consent uh, to the forced merger. So whatever language, whatever language we already had, the same exact language if you can find it. Where is it going to be added? Uh, it will be, um, it will be um, after the article, first paragraph after the article and before it says polling places and hours. <coughs> That's for the warning. That's for the warning. Okay, we have an amendment. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Jonas. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, further discussion of the amendment. Kyle. I think I found the statute that is being referenced. I assume it's 16 VSA section 428 budget to be voted. Is that the one that? I don't have it memorized, so if you'd like to read it. I think it might be. I, I, I'm not going to get into a yeah, legal yeah. debate right now, frankly. Yeah. Scott. I'm not just saying that. I think it only applies to the Article One language. Is right. That what said, uh, that's what we said. said that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. 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 That's why I was saying he was clearing this for the Article One language. And then you can have like whereas, whereas you know, start it, start off a warning with whereas something so and so. Yeah, that's that's more of a resolution. Yeah. But yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. Um, that would be a, a separate action. Okay. Um, not that, I mean, uh, I don't think it's something that we would initiate and carry to completion today. Um, so we have Chris's amendment seconded by Jonas. Uh, further discussion of, of Chris's amendment. Um, Are we voting just on the amendment? Or just, on, just on the amendment. So um, do we have a language, that, the precise language, that voting for this budget? Uh, I, I just copied and pasted from the other one that, that page 47. That voting for this budget shall not be interpreted as consenting in any way to a forced merger. Is that good, Chris? Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so uh, let's vote on that amendment. <coughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> None opposed. Okay. The amendment carries. Now let's vote on the warning. Um, ready to vote? Yep. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? None opposed. It carries. Great. Scott, if I may, I'm just going to start to pass this around. Obviously, the first page needs to be changed, and for those of you that have been in Washington Central Boards, uh, you've seen this before. We have the signature page so we can make any typos like we caught, and we can definitely insert the amendment in there without going over one page. Great. So I will be passing around the second page for those of you to sign. Fantastic. Right? Thank because you. Because we need to have it signed. Yes. Very good. All right. Now, um, time is passing. So, um, amendments to the Articles of Agreement. Did everybody have a chance to look through the package, at least as far as this? I ask one thing. There's a 3.14. That's the communication and annual reports on page 8. Yes. So you want approval of that? I like approval of that. If you're fine with it, we have to pass on. The transition board looked at this before. Um, what we would need to do is to um, two things that will happen. This graph, that's still a line graph, will be changed into a bar graph, and the title will be changed on the top. Mm -hmm. And where it says WCUUSD warning that you just approved will be put in here for two pages. Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm nervous about doing this right now, need to do this right now, is that we literally need to get this to the printers mm -hmm. fri by Friday yeah. to get them ready and have them in the public places that Lindy had said we're going to put them in town offices and schools yeah. and to get the postcards out to all the voters, which have to be there 10 days prior to the vote. Yeah. So there is some, we literally have things lined right up right now right. going into tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there are 
I don't feel that I need, I didn't ask for an action on it, uh, but I, if you have anything on here, we talked about it at the transition board. Uh, the letter has been edited from uh, our time that uh, the meeting where you looked us over and we tried to explain where things are at. Mm -hmm. So I would take any feedback, but that needs to, this needs to get to print. Yes. Um, I've seen this before, and uh, I think it, it's yeah, fine. So do you need a motion? I don't need a motion. I just want to make sure you're all fine with this. I'm going to go tomorrow morning with it. Once we, yep. we got to do a couple corrections without going in there. Is that the annual report? That's yes. the annual okay. report. Did you do that in action? Is there? Yeah. Oh, there is. There's okay, the yes, there is a group of four. Let's do yeah. that. Four, four. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I make a motion Thank to approve it? You may indeed. Floor moved. Second? I'll second. Lindy seconds. Uh, any further discussion? It, it, it does seem like there is a lot of language that we want to get out to the public, yes. like including the language that we're, that we're inserting in everything Kyle's language. Um, if we should be transparent, we should put the impact on tax rates <coughs> somewhere. I would like the board yes, to resolve that we will do that we will do great. I would like the board to resolve at some point that we will do everything we can to mitigate the debt issue. Mm -hmm. Instead, right? Instead of leaving it, I mean, some of this is uh, you know up to outside forces that we don't have control over. But everything I would like the public to know that we are sensitive to this and that we are not trying to make this unfair thing happen. Um, if this is the appropriate place for that, great, or, or if not, let's just make sure that we can tell the public that at some point. Yeah. That we're not just blithely passing this on to them and the people in Callis and Worcester are going to, you know, right. get the short end. And I think you've made a good start just now with Lisa transcribing your words. <laughs> so. Can you please strike short end? <laughs> she doesn't do that for us. <laughs> okay, um, so we have the motion and a second. Approved WCUUSD annual report. Uh, ready for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. It carries. All right. Anything else that I missed? That um, no. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make. Uh, we didn't talk about the Washington Central Unified Union School District Capital Fund, mm -hmm. uh, which is one that the voters will need to set up. It is not on this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Lori and I will have to come back to you, or Lori will have to come back to you at another time to That's okay. get that set up. Yeah. It is something you will need to do, as you have, and within the capital fund, you can track it by building if you so choose. Yeah, um, that I think that should be another future agenda. Yeah. So um, let's mark that down as a future yeah. agenda. Okay. Um, so, uh, amendments to the Articles of Agreement. You may have seen in Chris Leopold's, the attorney's letter, uh, recommending that we not warn the amendments to the Articles of Agreement at this time. This is, it is in there, it's on page 34. I can give you a little context to that, Scott, if you'd like. Please. Um, this was not something I asked for from Chris, I want to be really clear, because I was trying to get this pushed forward, but he said he didn't feel that he wouldn't be doing his duty as your attorney to not bring it up. So I asked him to put it in writing. He said he didn't have time to draft it in a letter with a lot more oh, details gosh. behind yeah. it. This was literally yesterday afternoon. I, he said he could put it in this form. Yeah. This is actually one instance where I agree with him. I agree. I mean, yeah. um, so, um, I do not agree with him. No. Because no. we don't have time to work on it. Well, this, but then you're stuck with the default options. But then we can change that. Um, let, let's work with the motion, shall we? Uh, I'm sorry, I need to go back one moment. I took a note on this uh, on page eight, the annual report letter that we just approved lists the towns of Berlin, Callis, Doty, East Montpelier. Oh, oh, okay. okay. We, my, mine was more in concept. Yeah, we'll get that. Yeah. So we'll look for Romney and Doty throughout it. Uh, what was? I don't have time to read this. 
Basically, what he says is just too much. Um, so uh, we can we can make a motion and and grapple with it. If, if we're not going to amend the Articles of Agreement right now, can we at least talk for a brief minute about what we would like to amend so we can get that conversation on the record now so that we don't start from scratch at some point? Oh, yeah, not to worry, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, do I have a motion to recommend the Articles of Agreement? Um, I am um, going to recommend uh, the amendments to the Articles of Agreement right. that we um, have both on. Uh, and we're presenting to this board as a recommendation from the transition board. And, um, great. Okay. So, right. recommend the amendments that we worked on. Right. Yes. Um, so, so, did you catch that, Lisa? Um, no. Sorry. <laughs> I got that you moved to approve the amendments to the Articles of Agreement. That's how far I got. Sorry. No, I, I move that we warn uh, the amendments to the Articles um, uh, of Agreement. Um, so that the voters have a chance to weigh in on them mm -hmm. and vote to either approve them or not approve the amendments that we we proposed. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And and we need a second. A second. Very good. It's kind of <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. Um, so the reason um, for this is that the the fault articles uh, which were gifted to us. Uh, by the state board um, were the subject of, of great discussion and long-term discussion uh, and I think over a series of, of months, many meetings, uh, we uh, came up with uh, amendments to certain portions, certain articles uh, that I think reflected our values here, most particularly the school closing provisions. Um, and I think to not provide the voters with an opportunity to weigh in on those now would do the disservice. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, so we will not be voting on the default articles of agreement. It will just be on the amendment. The right. default articles become effective as a matter of law mm -hmm. if we don't do anything. And we're voting on the amendments to the articles that we've selected. So, so, uh, so in other words, if we vote yes on this, we're agreeing to, I believe, Article 5, which is the debt. So, you know, if you don't do anything, you, Article 5 comes back. Okay. If we don't do anything. And we haven't touched Article 5. Yeah, I know. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. I just wanted to be very clear. Yeah. Okay, I just, there's some vocabulary that I think is very pertinent to use in this discussion. Mm -hmm. There are default, and Chris went this way. So, there, we were given default articles of agreement. We're trying to amend some of those, which are allowed for in Article 14. Yes. There are certain levels that the voters are allowed to do, and there are certain ones that the voters aren't allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And that these are proposed amendments to the ones that the voters can approve changing. Right. Yes. Well, but the voters won't be approving them unless we present them. To that, that, I right. agree. I agree. I agree. I just want to make right. sure. But those are the only ones that would be voted I think, on. Right. right. I think one of the things that we confuse a lot in our conversation is the difference between articles and amendments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are given articles already. We're trying to amend those articles mm -hmm. that, in which the voters can amend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that precision is needed in this conversation. Mm -hmm. As you as you were pointing out, Chris, there are some articles that according to the default articles that we can the voters may not amend. And yeah, and um, we, I think the recommendation we've only advanced the ones that we have the authority to right. No, yes, no. To, uh, right, yes, right. So everything, everything is kosher in this room. Um, the question that, that Chris Leopold raises is whether it's from the voters' perspective, if it's just overwhelming, and whether it distracts from the, um, the budget, which. He's arguing should be the focus. Um, I'm happy to hear other opinions. In fact, I'm hoping to hear other opinions. And I don't know why we don't trust the voters to be able to read articles and decide on their own whether, I mean, they, they voted on 10 different 
races, um, although only one was contested. Um, but it's just like any other ballot measure of reading and saying, yes, I agree with that, or no, I don't agree with that, and you know, to uh, deprive the voters of an opportunity to weigh in on what this constitution will be for our for this new school district, because we think they'd be overwhelmed. <coughs> It's just this poem, I think, actually. Will each amendment be a separate article? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, having been on a you know, chair the committee of articles going, I know that I had a lot of passion for this. I really wanted to get this done because I felt like after we unified, we were not going to have time to do it. But hearing the conversation today, <coughs> listening to, uh, uh, you know, reading Chris Lovell's letter this afternoon, when I, that and listening their concerns about transparency and that you know that the new board members don't want to rubber stamp as passionate as I was to get this this done I I feel like we could pass the whole slate just as recommendations and something once we figure out how we work as a as, as the group that we all put out articles of agreement at a later date you know, we have a better idea of how we are operating together. I, you know, I feel terrible saying that because I really want it this out. But listening to the, I think that's what it's more. Of. And I got a very convincing email from you that you sent to me, and I believe Matthew too, saying why the articles were faulty to a fault of a fault. I don't even <laughs> like. So you know, like less. There's so many other things that if we're going to put that budget out in front of voters now and we want to be transparent about that, uh, considering how long we have taken today, I don't know if we will have enough time to put all of this information in front of the of the voters mm -hmm. and due diligence on what we want these amendments to accomplish. Yeah. That's hard to, to say that. Thanks. Um, Rick? Will the voters have the ability to see if the default article and the amended article, I mean, it's a comparative. It isn't just a yes or no necessarily. They have to know what, they should know what they're going to be saddled with if they don't vote for it. So, you, you, what, um, do you have a copy of the, uh, of the agenda package? Here? I do, right here. Uh, if you look at um, page 36, Sorry. for example, you, you can see that um, my understanding is that the uh, and please correct me though if I'm mistaken. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, sorry. Did you say something? Yeah. Um, okay, so before I go out, because I just have to go out. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we haven't had a break and uh, I need <laughs> to. <laughs> but um, if the, in, the article has to be presented in its entirety. In its entirety, and it's yeah. the same as the previous one. The article is what will appear on the ballot. Right. Oh, so you can do a lot of communication other ways, but what's on the ballot is what's right in that article. So stuff coming out is struck through, stuff going in is bolded and underscored. I, I'm taking Chris's work on this because he's worked with many committees, either both forced and not and voluntary mergers to pass articles of agreement. Mm -hmm. So the the strike throughs will show in other words, right? Yes, it's there, it's there. there. That's what I guess it's done, so I'm sorry about that. No, 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 please. <laughs> that was just my question. I didn't know if it would be in a finished form and not showing. Yes, the, it will It will show the strike through. Deletions, yeah. Good. The strike throughs. Sorry, Ellen. Um, Ellen Mailer, East Montpelier. I guess I really think that this Article 5 about representative uh, voting structures really needs to be presented in a thoughtful way to the people of the five towns. I know I was at one board meeting or read in the minutes that uh, Kari Bradley said there's going to be thousands of people voting and so therefore we should go to representative government. There aren't thousands of people voting. Yeah. That's the long and the short of it, unfortunately. Yeah. And I really think that this representative form of, gov of voting on the budgets where one person is voting for every so many people, uh, 17 people, or whatever the formula is that it comes up with, is really one more way to remove people from empowering themselves to quite honestly pay attention. And it, it's discouraging to think that the transition committee 
would even put this forth. And I understand that there's a member from Middlesex that is uh, supporting this, and it's her kind of brainchild. But I just, I really think that the people in these towns need to know that Article 5 is going to take away their one person, one vote. And I think that needs explaining. Yeah. That needs thoughtful explaining. And therefore, if this needs thoughtful explaining, what do these other ones need? Do they need more thoughtful explaining <coughs> to the public at large as well? Yeah, that's very useful. Thank you. Um, Chris? Do you want to answer? Sure. Um, first, and it's not a imposition of this uh, representative model. It's a consideration of it um, for further action. This does not institute. I, yeah, I understand. Do you understand that? that? Okay, it's so. in the morning, and at the meeting that I went to at Romney, yeah. uh, Laura has suggested that in that word that's here, shall be changed to may. And it's not in here, changed to may. And in the other... Uh, minutes of the meeting, it was never changed again. There's a warning if it's, a, if it's just a suggestion. Yeah. This, this was supposed should to be recommendations, and they go written as articles. So that is a mistake. Because on the bottom article. of the page, um, yes, but we, we just did them as recommendations. On the bottom of the page, we're recommendations from the board, or not an article. So should that not be in the that, warning? That should be on the, on, the, on, the, on the warning. I have no problem with moving to strike that, but I think there are articles that we should move forward with. OK. Um, so, and so uh, are there any others that, that say? You know, and I, I would point out that article, uh, tentative article 18, um, you know, embodies the sentiment that we been expressing, some of us have been expressing about, yes. about any, yes. any vote here, or, um, I'm sorry, take that, that 18. That was a separability one, right? That was separability. No, it's, not, it's 19. Article 19. Yeah. Talking about that the articles and any voting for them are prepared, are prepared for and fun, uh, pursuant to the state board's order, and that by voting on these articles, the voters in the member towns are not waiving any rights to challenge the legality of the state board's force and merger order or rights reserved. So I'm going to get a potential sentiment from the, from the towns and the voters of the town. That would be just a, a way of doing that. Great. So are, are you going to move to... Um, so I move to? that we, um, we warn the... Um, uh, um, articles, the amendment to the default articles uh, that were recommended to us with the exception of Article 17. Okay, we're moving. We already have a motion, I think, don't we? Yeah. So this would be an amendment? The to amendment to remove Article 17, which um, addresses the uh, model of representative town meeting. Okay, that, the motion is to remove that article. Um, basically, Article 5 of the morning. Yeah. Right? So, just for clarification, yeah, if we're going to yeah. yeah. do it like we, like we agree at the Articles of Agreement Committee, both Article 4 and Article 5 were just recommendations. They were, because all we're doing in, uh, in all we had said is uh, the study committee recommends that the new school board discuss and create uh, a, a policy on school choice as soon as possible and not later than 2020, 2020, 2021. It was not, it was for us to work with, not right. an article to go out, because we're not putting anything out. We're not telling them what the choice is. So do you take that as a friendly amendment to remove article 16 too? Yeah. Yes. Um, no, article 4. Well, article there, four. the numbers are really Yeah, the numbers are really yeah. yeah. Article 4, article 16, article 5, article 17. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll all make sense. It'll all make sense. No, I mean, that's why I don't want to rush. I want it to yeah. make sense. Yeah. So, uh, friendly amendment? Like, um, like, this is maybe, this should be decided tonight. I, yeah, I, I agree. agree. Yeah. This is the first time. I mean, you need this, and I'm feeling a little frustrated because I'm supposed to make a decision, and I can't because there's conversation going on, and I'm trying to read it at the same time, and I'm just not that talented to do that. So I would abstain from any vote because I can't make a decision tonight if there was a vote. Are we in the same kind of time crunch? Yeah. That's um, the because, because if we don't do it tonight, it won't happen. Well, you get the default. And what will that do? What's and the that default? that means it's the default articles which um, were 
when the by the state place. order will become the effective governance tools. Until, until we amend them at some point. As our, ourselves. Most of them must well, be we're voting or through them. the voters. I mean, there's, there's articles that the board can amend, but there are articles that can only be amended by the voters. Yes. So we would have to go through the process that we've already actually gone through in terms of the, we have the articles committee and then the transition um, board dealing with articles. Um, and so, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying having the debate is not, uh, is, is it, having the debate again is a good thing, um, but I mean, I just, I, I don't want to just rest with the default articles as our governance tools. Yeah. Where are the default um, articles? They're in front. Is that starts on 18? Yeah. So just a clarification is that any of the articles that we would be voting wouldn't take effect until 2022, yeah. right? Um, no. Nothing would be... The closure ones, certainly. Yes, the closure, new board members. That's next year. Okay. Yeah. So That's we could still, year. but we could still put it out to vote for next year, right? Because it, nothing will take an effect on July first. That's just my own right. as much. Well, as, no, nothing that we vote on will be something that we can't do on July first, right? Until, on this school year, it won't be until well, the following seven, school article year. Article seven would take. Article nineteen would take effect right away. Article eighteen would take effect right away. Um, um, the Article 15. Um, Between the mangoes are over. Mm. So, um, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Bill, I just a point of information. You can vote on, you can hold an election whenever you would like mm -hmm. as a board for articles. You could do it before the first, you could do it after the first. It's really up to this board um, when you'd like to do that. Um, the articles that I think. You were just going through, I'm trying to get to them. I'm sorry. No, I want the warning. And I had it right in my fingers and I lost it. Um, what? 35. Thank you. Um, as you look at these, the only one that's probably the most time dependent on being able to do anything is the configuration of the board. You will need to do that before or on the day at which you hold your annual meeting, which has been approved to be town meeting day, mm -hmm. from the district organizational meeting, if you want to change the composition for next year. There are other ones here that have different timelines. Um, you know, the school closure is two years. That's given to us, as for those of us that worked on us know that that's it's after those two years. Um, there are other ones here, as I think were said, articles six and seven. I'm going off the warning article number, not the article number in the default. Mm -hmm. That are, are the articles of agreement. That's what the other article number is. Um, those would, would be right away. Okay. Um, so I think those are up to you. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Of course. Um, if we could warn them for, let's say, a primary or a November election, when other people are coming to vote anyway, it would give us time to work on them and, as a board, really delve into them and have something to put out to voters, not have a special election for just the articles, but I'm going there to vote on primaries or whatever it is. I don't so, know. So, but when's, when, when's the next primary? Well, November. November would give us time for <coughs> not a primary, but don't we have November? It's a year. I thought we had mid-year. Yeah. Oh, it's a great idea, though. Um, so we, we have a special one on the second or the first Tuesday of November when people are used to voting. <laughs> yeah. um, I think where, where we are, unless I have lost track, we have Chris proposing an amendment. Uh, friend of, modified in a different fashion by Floor to delete warning articles four and five. I'm not sure if we ever got a second on that. Did we ever get a second on that? Uh, yeah, I said that. Marilyn. I thought I heard Marilyn. No, oh, I, I, oh. I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, I second the original. The original. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the amendment fails. <laughs> are, are you seconding Chris's amendment? Oh. 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 Yes. Well, I'm sorry. Chris made the amendment. Chris, I just Chris added made the amendment. amendment to delete articles, articles four, four and, five. and five. I'll second that. 
Okay. I'll make sure I use the right one. Okay. So we have that amendment. Are you ready for a vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all opposed? Nay. Nay. So two opposed. Mm -hmm. You don't want to amend that? Oh, no, so, yeah, I, yeah, oh. I, I just amend it. Sorry, I'm just amend it. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry, i we're dealing with the amended warning, that is, the warning without Articles 4 and 5. Are you ready for a vote on it? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. All in favor of the amended warning, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. No. Okay. Um, can you raise hands? Aye. One, two, three, four, five. So, passes, five, four. Right? Did I count correctly? Five, four is passed. Okay, okay. Um, very good. <coughs> so, uh, Scott, if I may? Yes, the signature? The signature page will come here. We will amend the warning, and uh, but the signature page is here. Great, thank you. Okay. We have one more action agenda item, which is to approve the minutes. It, does it matter if we save those for our next meeting? No, you may save those for the next meeting. I do need to talk about 3.3. I know I, I late, want very much for you to talk about this, but I do want to set some things up. Please. And we can continue to do that in other meetings. Yeah, that sounds great. So. Um, any objection to just deferring minutes approval to our next meeting? And moving to 3.3, meeting protocols. No. Great. No. Yeah. As I'm signing this, the ones that we voted to get rid of are we'll still come out. here. We'll come, they'll come out. That's why we do a separate signature page, so that it can be, if you do something different at the table, we don't have to come and have another right. meeting and try to get for signature. I just need to get to my guest, Scott. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> don't mind that. Don't agree. I'm a teacher. Not a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that's a little difficult right now, and I hope that we'll, we'll I, I am optimistic that this board will grow, is in the policies and practices for how the meetings run. Oh, great. You currently sit with no policies. And we'll talk about that. I need to get to that tonight just a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm going to abbreviate this real fast. Sure. You've seen the hour we're at. In meeting protocols, the reason I did it that way, there's a lot about the agenda building flow, um, who is present at the meeting, how the speaking happens, literal seating arrangements. I mean, some of these we haven't done, we have done, and I just want to kind of stop and not necessarily make decisions tonight, but talk about it. Mm -hmm. the, the, one of the big one, and Chris started to bring it up to me, was location. One of the things I've seen that's been very successful with the um, with boards that emerge, they move from building to building to building. Yes. And that that building that's hosting is responsible for a student and or teacher presentation. And so that you're learning about each building, something that's happening there in that building. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it may be multiple buildings, but sometimes it would, um, you know, we defaulted to setting it up the way we've usually had board meetings in this type of physical layout. So we can talk about those types of things. And, um, you know, we can talk, one of the things I want to talk about, and like I said, I don't need a lot of them for answers, so what I would suggest is for the next meeting, we would pick an elementary school to be at and move to that, and we'd make a rotation that would just start. Mm -hmm. um, we would do, um, we want, I want to talk about the principal reports and how they give you reports. If you're going to meet twice a month, I think it's a lot to ask your administrative team to write reports for every meeting. Oh, okay. And that there may be a way that that cascades through the team, and then that there's verbal updates at every meeting. Um, and I've seen that at other merged, other merged places as well. Um, 
as you can see, the, the leadership team is sitting in the audience. That's one of the things that we talked about as a leadership team. Um, and so we're, I'm willing to, to have this discussion, and I think it should happen over a couple of meetings, um, but that we should be talking about how we build the agendas. And there are policies there that you'll, you should enact as a board about how you're going to operate. Some of them are um, probably more crucial to get down early, and others can wait. Just so it's clear to the public, like, how do I get something on the agenda? Mm -hmm. You know, what is your public comment practices going to be? I'm not even going to say procedure or policy, but what are your practices? Mm -hmm. Because you're at a point where you can set those. Right. And it was asked tonight of your public, and mm -hmm. I think that's very fair, but it's also time for this board to have some discussion about that as well. And I don't mean to say that in any way to short side <coughs> input. I'm just saying you should have that discussion. Um, so I think that you should start to think about those as a group and start to think about how you want to do that. I don't know if there are any reactions to that, but I just put that on the table to you as a board to be thinking about and for you to, I would almost suggest that that is probably an item on your agenda for a while. Yeah. Formative. Reflective, yeah, formative assessment of how to go, what do we want to do, yeah. and just not assume things because of the way they have been. But don't assume they need to change a certain way because it's some new merge board. Yeah. Um, a, a student member or two. Yeah, oh, that was on my list. I'm sorry. Oh, good. I, didn't say it. No. I said student representation. Ah. <laughs> it's on here. I, didn't, I just skipped over it because I was fine. trying to get through it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So um, that would be wonderful to have. Would you like us, would you like me, or do you want to work with me, Scott, as a chair to kind of outline? So for the next meeting, is there at least a list of this? And we could say maybe there's a suggestion for one or two to start the conversation with. Sure. I'd be glad to work with that on that between now and the next meeting. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thanks. But we'll start the next, we'll get out very shortly. I haven't, the principals haven't heard this, so I just put up that one of their buildings is going to be the host. And they'll all get a chance, but I think it's good to go around. Great. So, in terms of student representative, uh, would it be a nomination process or a volunteer? And if there were more volunteers, people expressing interest, students expressing interest? Uh, so, I can explain to you how we've done this at U32 for, mm -hmm. since I've been, before I was here, and Stephen can talk to you a lot. He's changed it um, since <coughs> coming aboard and working with the students to find the correct students to do it. And Stephen, do you want to talk a little bit about how it's currently done? The, the current process? Yeah. So the uh, current process for our students is I put out, um, we have a rotation, we have a junior and a senior on the board. Um, we put out notice um, towards the end of the school year to our sophomores um, for any students who are interested in, in assuming that position. And I also put it out to the TAs as well as their TA that they would recommend for it. Um, in many years, I get one or two, and I ask them to, uh, to write me a letter about why they want to serve on the board, and, um, and uh, then they come meet with me. And uh, to be honest, I've only had one person express interest in the last two years. So, um, so it, it's, the decision has been pretty easy. I would say that that process might be better turned over to the board. Like if you, you mean, it would make more sense that you guys would interview a couple of applicants should they wish to be a part of the board um, so that you can choose the students you think are good representatives of the student body as a whole. And that would be my suggestion. And Scott and George and I heard from the two current representatives, they highly support this and would like to see it go forward. Yeah, it, there's, a, I mean, if you don't mind me speaking. Um, the, the student uh, perspective uh, on the board has been <laughs> invaluable. And I know that for just the U32 board, they would typically come to me um, at a callback previous to our, which is a time when kids can meet with their teachers. Um, so they come to me previous and we'd go over the agenda so they knew what was happening so that they would be prepared for the, uh, for the meeting. And let me tell you, our, la our last two are over-prepared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, 
So I, I would I would highly recommend it. I think it's a great thing. Um, I would just um, offer one thing as thought. If you're asking a student to drive around the entire yeah. SU for meetings, um, that might, you might give some consideration to the fact that that really limits the number of kids who could uh, be a part of that in some ways. So just a consideration for for that that possibility. Right. Yeah. In, in terms of the um, <clears throat> you said there have been two students. Yes. Um, do, and, and this is going to your, your point about if we're moving around, you have to have a student who's mobile, and it might not be right. everybody. Um, is there something lost if it was, um, like, say we alternated locations, here one, here one meeting, elementary school the next, and then so rotated like that? Is there something lost by not having both students there? So, oh, yes, I believe there is something lost with not yeah. having students there. No, no, both. Both, both. both. Yes. I, yes. Yes, I think so. I think so. Um, I, one of it is is that, as we said, it's a junior and a senior. Mm -hmm. So while they work with each other and they talk, they have times where they've had different opinions. And the junior is learning where the senior might be doing more speaking. I've just seen that generally. Not all the time. It depends on the person. Um, and where... I was going to go is that there are some merged SUs where they come to a central location one time a month, so they know one of their meetings a month is always in that central location, and they go out to the others on the, like the third week. You know, the first week they're always centralized, or they vice versa. Um, I would say that you know half of your student body, half of the staff, is here, is right here. Right. So more than half your parents. But I like I like the idea of being out and seeing what's happening in other schools. I think that's yeah, I think really so. crucial, yeah. especially as we start for boards. To one of the things I've heard from all of you throughout my years here and many other board members is that I've learned a lot by being in. Oh, I didn't realize that. Or I didn't know that. And I, for me, it's an assumption because I'm around in all the different buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you have anything in there on committees? I don't have on committees. My advice to you that I've heard from other boards is um, don't rush into it. Not don't jump into it right away, but be practical and thoughtful about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't say that like tonight if you were, if this group were to say let's Put committees in right now tonight and say, "Oh, start the discussion, but yeah. don't get yourself locked in yet." And the reason is you want to be very thoughtful about committees. And I know Floor's done a lot of thought of this and looking at some of the things that are done in other states. In Vermont, you can, because of our open meeting law, you can hamper discussions you may not want to hamper by putting it into a public meeting. And as soon as you make a committee even if it's a committee of one from this board, you've made it an open meeting law. Mm -hmm. right. So I just want you to be thoughtful about it. I'm not saying not to do it or to do it. Right. Be thoughtful. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Flo. Can I add something for the future? I think that's where we are. Yeah. That we talk about a retreat. So, so that in that retreat, we can talk about you know, how we want our governance to to work and how you know our code of ethics and just how we want to operate so that that will also inform our committees or not committees. Sounds good. Okay, as the as the minute hand approaches 12, um, if we, uh, I know we're, we're sort of jumping around like um, well, kangaroo here, but if we go to future agenda items, does anyone object? Thank you. One minute on policies, because there are two things you have to do as a board, in my opinion, to be operational by July 1. Yeah. You need policies, mm -hmm. which you don't have, and a budget. So um, you took care of the budget piece. I have been working with a subcommittee of the leadership team reviewing all the policies. Mm -hmm. There are currently 28 required policies. I brought a list I'd be glad to hand out later. I'm not going to get into it, but you can take it with you of what the required policies are, what the recommended, and we have a process that Jody, Aaron, and myself are going through and looking at the policies to try to bring you on a meeting schedule that I'm sure we're gonna talk about in future agenda meetings of 
what do you need to do to be operational? The ones that are required by federal and state statute, that's, that's the basement floor. Mm -hmm. uh, we, and all, all of them except for two, are united across Washington Central already in existence in policy books. So they're really close, but I just, I need to say that tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Um, so what I have as future agenda items is um, consideration of the uh, support for the Vermont School Boards Association in the budget, next year's budget, the capital fund retreat, um, discussion of uh, our internal organization or how we will do our work among ourselves, and policies. Does anybody have anything that they... Um, discuss about run, how we run the meeting, which is, I think, on the, I think that's yeah. different than governance, if you think it's the same nice. discovered. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we should just touch on committees, too. Okay. <coughs> Okay. I think we should add an update on the uh, litigation. That, that should be part of every meeting for the next few months. You're planning to be here for every meeting for the next few months? <laughs> or somebody? I didn't say I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that sounds great. May we talk about some dates? Please. So you approved to go the first and third. Yes. I think the third, it, the third is June nineteenth, which is graduation at many of our elementary schools, uh, hmm. and we still may need that. As you saw, I sent all of you a proposed plan that looks something like this. It gets getting updated. We will need a meeting on June twelfth, which is so we're going to need to meet every Wednesday of June. The reason I didn't propose next Wednesday was because of the Washington Central Supervising Union to interview the, and hopefully approve an interim superintendent. Otherwise, I would put that down too, because I think they're, while those future agenda items are probably about half the work that, you know, what's on here. We'll, we'll combine, Scott, you and I can work to combine this, but mm -hmm. there's quite a bit of work to done to do before now and the end of June. Yeah, yeah. Without, I'm trying to give time for people to digest as well. Yeah. If you look at this plan, you'll see some things where I'm trying to put it on the table and have the action the next time. That that is exactly what we should be doing. But we should always be aiming, possible. aiming yeah. for that. Right. I just can't always do that. This abbreviated month that right. we have to go. Yeah. I, yeah. I hear you. So, so are, are you suggesting June meetings on the first, second, and fourth, but not on the nineteenth? Right the now, I think we should plan on the fifth, the twelfth. And at the end of the 5th and 12th, talk about what we need to do the 19th. Lori and I, you'll see on there are a bunch of things to do with you. The organization that we need the board to approve. And we can figure out, I, Lori and I will go work and see if there's some of those that we can move up. Or we need to come back on the 26th. If the budget fails, you will need a, you will need a meeting the next night on the 26th. Yeah. A week. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Bill. Thank you. Anything else from anybody? Um, before, before I let you go, I just wanted to thank all of you very much. And um, I, I know the first discussion was, was hard, but I, I had the sense that it was necessary just so that we would be able to get through our, you know, the rest of the work. And I appreciate your bearing with me, not just those of you on the board, but also those of you in the um, box seats. Not the chips. <laughs> I don't want to hold up the end. I just I wanted to give a little feedback because I, I don't think I am going to come back to one of these meetings. And um, it's just it, this had a very different feel from my local meetings. And this isn't at all the fault of the Ten, the nine of you that are here, this is what the state did to us. But um, in my local meetings, I can have a dialogue with the board members. We can talk for half an hour about a $2,000 budget line item. And tonight, you guys approved a $33 million budget item with less than that amount of discussion. 
And I'm also just struck that it's the identical budget as the ones we've already approved. And the voters are going to have to be dragged back out to the polls once again to vote on the exact same budgets. The only difference is this one gets paid for by Callis, Worcester, and Berlin far more than the ones we've already uh, budgeted. And I, I just can't believe that's where we are. And I just hope that the Vermont Supreme Court sees the inequity of this, that the forced merger does not happen, and that we go forward with the budgets we approved and the local school boards that we have where we can communicate uh, more openly and transparently and have more accountability and work with our towns and our schools on what the people living there, sending their kids to the buildings, want from their schools. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, last word, Rick. Last word. I, this is just a bit of advice. I'm not on this board, but I've talked to several main towns that have since dropped out of consolidation. And one of the common complaints was that when they would go, if they could find the public meetings, they would be given two more minutes, and that was it. They weren't even listened to in their comments. And from my experience in dealing with municipalities, which is pretty ex extensive in the planning process, if people take time to come to these minutes, if they want to talk for 15 minutes, you let them talk and hear them. And to, if you don't, you we will end up this will disintegrate and people will lose interest. I mean, I feel, have many of the same feelings that Kyle does. And believe it or not, I mean, I, for those of you who know me, I put a lot into my community and a lot into schools over the years. And I, th there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of goodwill that this board is going to have to build. And it's not your doing. This is a lack of trust now and our own high leadership at AOE and at, in our legislature. But unfortunately, the way this is set up, you are the focal point of that. So this is gonna take a lot of very careful outreach into the communities. And, and we, welcome, we welcome the help as much as we can. Uh, you know I will. You know, I know, I know. So thank you very much, both of you, all of you. Um, I need everyone to stop by and sign this because we can adjourn it first. Okay, let's adjourn and sign Bill's paper. Don't have a motion. Yeah. Um, we adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody opposed? Sign the sign.